हॅलो आणि तर मी कॉन्टॅक्ट करायचा प्रयत्न केला मेसेज टाकलेला आहे मित्रांना कॉन्टॅक्ट होत नाही हॅलो सुनिता हो सर मी फोन केला पण कॉन्टॅक्ट होऊ शकला नाही मेसेज टाकलाय मी सरांना जॉईन होते सर काही प्रॉब्लेम नाही कालच झालेलं आहे सरांनी ओके या अगेन गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल फॉर फ्यू मोर मिनिट
गुड मॉर्निंग गायत्री मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग यस वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम वेलकम अपन को सर Yes, good morning to all. हेलो 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 रोहिणी मैडम रोहिणी मैडम रोहिणी मैडम रोहिणी सर 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 मॉर्निंग 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 वेरी वेरी गुड गुड यस यस 
हो सर Welcome. Welcome to the virtual national conference on advance in chemical science and sustainable development. I am Aprajita Kanojia from Institute of Science, Mumbai. And I am Eskhan Hiba from VPMB and Bandurkar College of Science, Thane. Welcome you all for our national conference. I am super excited to have you all here. Excited about the most amazing con. conversation that we are going to have today heba can you please make us know about the conference detail yes sure prajita good morning to all the dignitaries chief guests delegates and all the audience with great joy and immense exultation i am ms khan heba feel privileged to extend my warm welcome on behalf of vpmb and bandurkar college of science autonomous thane for national conference on advance in chemical science and sustainable development organized by department of chemistry b n bandurkar college we are truly blessed to collaborate with dr bhumi baba state university the institute of science i would like to thank dr jairam khobragade sir the director of bhumi baba state university for giving us an excellent opportunity to collaborate with our college thank you so much sir Before this we are done with two preparatory workshops of conference on advance in chemical science and sustainable development in that we got a chance to listen many eminent speakers which really help us in understanding various technologies thanks to each and every one so as we know and king martin luther said darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that hate cannot out drive out hate only love can do that so to begin with a conference with only love and respect i would request our today's chief guest dr anthony melvin crusty sir to inaugurate the function and also would like to call sai for playing the inaugural slides Thank you, sir. Thank you, welcome. sir. Welcome, welcome. Sir, now please allow us to proceed further by concluding that a conference has been inaugurated. Yes, this uh, special conference has been inaugurated. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now it's time for institutional tour 
of both the colleges would like to hand over the further session to Ms. Sally and Swati ma'am. Over to you.
for the wonderful edit so as we all know education is the passport to future but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world now the person who has consumed himself to change the society and light the darkness in the life of students i would like to call a vice principal convener of the conference head of the chemistry department of bn bandurkar college sir dr ramavadekar to welcome our chief guest our guest and a big few words related to our conference about our college and about the department of chemistry over to you sir yes yes thank you uh, eva and all uh, team anchoring team uh, on behalf of uh, organized committee of this uh, workshop uh, advances in chemical sciences and sustainable development uh, acssd 2021 i welcome all uh, the dignitaries our guests uh, chief guests and uh, paper presenters and uh, uh, our principal मोजेस कुलेट सर बेडेकर सर अवर चेयरमैन विद्याप्रसारक मंडल एंड ऑल अदर डिग्नेटरीज एंड इनवाइटेड स्पीकर्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स बेसिकली सिंस इस इंसेप्शन ऑफ दिस केमिस्ट्री डिपार्टमेंट एंड कॉलेज फ्रॉम 1969 इट इज अवर इंडिवर टू गिव द स्टूडेंट्स बेस्ट knowledge based ideas based thought and all related uh, issues which are concerning the society as such and uh, education and our department is involved in offering the undergraduate courses postgraduate courses and uh, primarily uh, this uh, research uh, uh, degrees like uh, uh, phd's and mscy research also so i am happy to uh, say that our college is grown in multiple and uh, student centric approach is maintained students are exposed through such type of conferences seminars and workshop to the latest uh, developments and latest technique and technologies and let, latest uh, latest aspects and concepts of this modern age and uh, definitely ecology and economy and environment which are playing key role we can say that now uh, in a, a corona age we are living and uh, we, we are uh, we felt uh, that we will be able to conduct the uh, this conference offline but uh, it is not to be but anyway we are here to uh, for the third and final uh, national conference and i am happy that all branches of uh, chemical sciences right from nano science nuclear science bio sciences uh, medical science you know every aspect of uh, chemical science is uh, covered and our uh, eminent speakers in the first uh, workshop and second preparatory workshop and now in the third preparatory workshop which is a continuation of first and second more focus and time focus is given on uh, environment and green and clean chemistry uh, along with other uh, branches such as nano science uh, material science and uh, uh, fragrance and flavors and every aspect of chemistry covered and our main aim and motive is to give the students exposure and bring uh, the uh, science and industry people and academia and student uh, together and uh, develop and evolve some ideas and thoughts and uh, make the students know about latest development in the uh, field of chemical sciences so i wish uh, I, i congratulate all the organizing committee and all the students participants and all of you and uh, wish you best uh, success thank you thank you sir yes, for your valuable information i need to say this again you just don't teach you inspire thank you sir thank you now let us have the pleasure of listening to the welcome remark of our honorable director sir dr jayram khobra gadi sir 
who is the convener in chief and chair of the conference and director the is mumbai dr homi baba state university i consider it a great honor to welcome dr jayram khobra gade sir for welcoming address so, so please, please. Sir, is there online? Upra Gade, sir, unmute, Gade, sir, unmute, unmute, Kara, unmute, Kara. Sir, muted, I told you. हेलो कोबरागढ़ सर आ रहे हैं ऑनलाइन आह सर एक्चुअली कोबरागढ़ सर इस बीजी में कर मीटिंग मंत्रालय है सो ही एस एंड ही इज वेरी बिजी सो दैट्स वे ही एस एंड द रिकॉर्डिंग सो वी आर ट्राइंग टू प्ले द रिकॉर्डिंग ओके 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 Sir, the paper is not audible. Good morning, all of you. This is Yuvan and Anil Sriyajar, the Department of Chemistry. The Institute of Science has organized today's national conference on advances in chemical science and sustainable development in collaboration with the Department of Chemistry of B. L. Madhavakar College of Science, Mumbai. At the outset, I welcome and congratulate you all to be participant in today's national conference. Hence, this institute has carved. A niche in the annals of education that has successfully completed hundred years of public education in different walks of life, realizing the importance values of science. Lord Sydenham, in 1907, during the first year of his governorship of the presidency, appealed for the help in providing facilities for the study of science in Mumbai University. This appeal had generous response. And the foundation stone of the building was laid by Lord Sydenham on the 5th of April 1911. But owing to the war, the actual starting of the institute delayed until 1920. The institute lifted lion's share of Mumbai University in imparting advanced education in all branches of science to young men and also trained them in research. As a result, the institute. Identified as institute with potential for excellence by the University Grants Commission, New Delhi, and has been re-accredited with the A grade by National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Bangalore. Further, by academic achievements, the institute becomes a leading institute in shaping Dr. Ramesh Babu State Cluster University. Now, the institute is the component of the Dr. Ramesh Babu State University. Department of Chemistry is the largest department in the Institute of Science. It consists of four sections: Physical Chemistry, Organic Chemistry, 
inorganic chemistry and analytical chemistry. The Department of Chemistry has lion's share in all round development in academic and research activities of the institute. The institute has been very fortunate to have in its year number of brilliant teachers and researchers in chemistry. Dr. Dr. C. J. Fox, Fox, Fox Dr. Dr. A. N. Eldron, Dr. T. S. Wheeler, Dr. J. R. Marchand, Professor Haldar, Professor Darshani, Professor Shinde, and Professor Sadunke, and many more. The branch of analytical chemistry was started in the year 1974. Thanks. Today, Department of Chemistry boosts of 160 students by papers and more than 50 students working for their doctoral degrees. The performance of the institute at the university examination has always been outstanding every year. The researchers are contributing, contributing well for the wealth of scientific knowledge by their discoveries in the various fields. The area of research in the chemistry department includes nanomaterials, organic synthesis, drugs, discovery, computational chemistry, environmental chemistry and analytical chemistry. Today, the department is equipped with the full modern sophisticated instruments which are necessary for the research and also we are trying for the postdoctoral fellowship in the institute in the chemistry department. With this, I wish all the grand success to this two-day national conference. Thank you very much. Thank you so for your all the valuable information. Enlightenment is the growing all the time. It is not something that happened once and it is complete. It goes on growing. So our institute is blessed to have one of the inspiring person who have overcome many obstacles in life and achieved success. So here I would request that it's a principal sir. In the chair of the conference, conference, Captain Dr. Moses Collett of Bain Bandurkar College to share some information regarding the conference. Over to you, sir. Very well, good morning. Yes, thank, you so thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, a very, very good morning to all. Good morning. On behalf, on behalf of our, our Vijay Prasarak Mandal Thani and on the uh, of our BN Mandalore College of Science or Anonymous. I extend a warm welcome to all, all of our patrons, our dignitaries, guests, members of the management, members of our various governing bodies, academic body, board of studies, to all the participants, to our staff, and these dear students, welcome to all. I also welcome, or extend the welcome to all of you on behalf of our chairman of India Prasarak Madhya, Dr. Vijaya Bedekar, sir. Welcome to this two-day national conference on advances in chemical sciences and sustainable development, ACSSD 2021 which has been organized today and tomorrow. In this respect, I congratulate both the departments, both the departments of chemistry, the department of chemistry of our own Bandurkar College of Science and the department of chemistry, Institute of Science, Omi Baba State University for coming together in this joint venture and jointly organizing this national conference. Something about our college. Our BN Bandurkar College of Science Thane is an autonomous college. As a Baudekar said, founded in 1969. In the initial years, the college was under University of uh, Pune, uh, Pune University. Later on, it got affiliated by government decision, the University of Mumbai. In the past 50 years or so, there have been some landmark achievements, such as NAC re-accreditation with A grading, college 
with the potential of excellence that is a CPE awarded by UGC, the best college award from the University of Mumbai. ISO certification, ISO 9001-2015 certification. The RBNQA, Ramkrishna Bajaj, National Quality Award certificate, commendation certificate, and milestone by the college. Then recipient of Jagar Jadiwansa Awards two times from the government of Maharashtra. Support under FIST, the Fund for Infrastructure in Science and Technology, O level, as well as department supported under DBT Star College scheme. This year's milestone achievement has been the award of autonomy to the college from UGC and the University of Mumbai and winning of the big award that the best educational quality enhancement team special citation award 2020, the competition of which was held in 2021. I congratulate everybody who has been responsible for all these milestone achievements. Coming back to the conference, the virtual tour of both the institutes has been excellent, well executed, well arranged. Thank you so much. Friends, in the title of the conference, the words sustainable development are very important. In our enthusiasm, I would say over enthusiasm and zeal for more and more development, the developers themselves forget the sustainability aspect. Or rather, sometimes it remains. It is there, but it remains on paper. We have all witnessed and we are still witnessing. non-sustainable development and facing the consequence of such non-sustainable development. So sustainable development, development is very, very important and I congratulate the organizers for relating to this and selecting this title of the conference. Selecting a title is also very, very difficult. So congratulations to the team. Congratulations, Abhavadikar sir, Anita madam and the team for selecting this title and keeping the word sustainable in it. I welcome Dr. Jairam Kobragade, Director of Institute of Science and Dr. Gayatri Barbade, the head Department of Chemistry Institute of Science. Our own convener, Dr. Yeah, Bhavadikar sir and co-convener, Anita Goswami madam, I welcome them, them and their, their team who have been working very hard for this conference and wish them all the best, all the success for the conference. I also welcome our chief guest for the day, Dr. Anthony Melvin Castro. Welcome sir, Castro sir. Sir, is, sir is renowned down throughout the world. And I thank you, thank you for our invitation. Thank you, thank you, sir. I welcome, I welcome the keynote speaker. speaker. Yes, yes, thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Keynote speaker, speaker Professor Sanjay Rosadi, sir, from Kolkata, Kolkata Professor Dr. Vivek Kolchetivar, and Dr. Amit Dodi, sir, who has joined, who has joined in from the Netherlands, who will be delivering the invited talk for today. Also, also Tomorrow's important speakers, note speakers, and the invited uh, speakers for tomorrow, Dr. Murli Dar English, sir, from Vadodara, welcome, sir, and, and Professor, Professor Rajendra Sirsat, sir, from Goa. I welcome them, as well as the valedictory speaker, my good friend, Professor Edi Sawan, sir, welcome. Along with the working committee, and the organizing committee. I welcome, I thank all, I thank all the staff and the students, especially the student volunteers who are the backbone of any organizing team. Thank you volunteers, thank you working team, thank you organizing team, 
especially today I saw Aparajita and Hiba conducting the conference inaugural session. Well done. Wishing you all a very fruitful uh, deliberation for the next two days, fruitful interactions, and in the team of the conference. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable address and time. Let's further move on to the beginning of conference and publication by Dr. Vijay Bedekar, Chairman of Vijay Prasarak Mandal. So I would like to hand over the session to Nitin, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ibn. Wait for a moment. Okay. Uh, uh, hello, Hi. one and all. And my, name, my name is Nitin Guri. I am presenting here the process of, of this conference. conference. Uh, at, at the, the uh, beginning of this proceeding, we are, we are in the space with the, the BNM. And this process is edited and compiled by Dr. Mr. Editorial portal will contain the pattern of uh, this conference, Dr. Vivi Bedekar, sir, and Dr. And Dr. 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 Manis, sir. The in chief conference, uh, Captain and Dr. Moses Kohler and Jairam. The convener of this con conference, Dr. Ria Bodekar, sir. And Dr. Gayatri Bhavade Mahar. The co convener of this conference, Dr. A. Gosongi Mahar and Dr. Sushma Ambadekar. Then, organizing secretary, Dr. S. S. Mahar, sir, and Dr. Vikas Bhavade, sir. Then, joint organizing secretary, Dr. A. N. Bhumkar, sir, and Dr. Shal Mahane, sir. The other, other organizing uh, members, then, student representative and advisory board is given at uh, given. Then we uh, after in, after introduce, introduce the editorial board, board we, we move, move toward the uh, of, of that, that editorial, editorial board. We big with math, math from, from desk, desk of principal, principal uh, and convener uh, in uh, Dr. Moses Kohle sir, IC principal of uh, BN Bandar College of Science. Uh, in his message, he put the uh, best wishes for, for uh, this. Uh, about the VPMs, BPMs, the college, uh, college of science, autonomous. Uh, then, then after the message from the principal, we took the message from direct. Uh, uh, and then uh, in, in, uh, in, in his message, the uh, Dr. Jairam Kobra sir, gives the uh, first of all introduction that about the and Dr. Uh, 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 then uh, uh, he also gives the best wishes, wishes for uh, the uh, conference. After director message, we move toward the convener's message of uh, 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 DIA HOD of, HOD of, of uh, chemistry department, department uh, uh, with BN BN Bangalore College. Uh, uh, in, in his message, he put the information about the, about the uh, about, uh, 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 our, our department. department. Department of Chemistry, uh, Department of Chemistry, PMB in Nursa College, uh, then, uh, in, in Kananar Mass of uh, uh, Karbar Karbar Ma'am, uh, she, uh, she put the uh, introduction about the Department of Chemistry, uh, 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 in terms of uh, Homi Baba uh, Institute. Uh, he, uh, she gave the, uh, thanks to the principal of the BNM Bangalore, uh, Mr. Kohle, sir, uh, for uh, for this event, and uh, she gave the best wish for uh, 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 Then, after the uh, uh, message, we move toward the conveyor message. Dr. Anita Goswami Giri, ma'am, and Sushma Ambedkar, ma'am, in her mind, they put the other part of our department, our conference, and college and institute. Then the uh, organizing secretary uh, uh, messages uh, which given by the doctor sir, and Dr. Vikas uh, Bangaris, uh, Vikas Bangaris, Bangaris sir. Uh, in his message, they put the, uh, put the 
information about the uh, uh, conference and uh, uh, and the uh, and and then uh, join organizing three ajit bhumkar sir and vishal bhaiwa sir okay he uh, uh, they also uh, uh, would <coughs> message about the conference and, and the department, department and give, and give the best wishes for this uh fun friends uh, uh, as the uh, principal uh, sir that that without without students are the boss at back of each and every event so we student would have to be uh, and further uh, 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 we can move, move further then uh, in, in this slide uh, uh wait uh, in this that uh, this is to be presented to Han Hiba uh, from from Manbaka College and Kanji the professor has give you passage and the give the just just conference then after the uh that we do to uh talk for that oral 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 presentation and post presentation then there are total 11 oral presentation uh, are received uh, from the various institute uh, and this oral presentations are made are on organic synthesis biomolecules biochemistry then materials uh, and radical chemistry etc then adding to this oral presentation 2020 is are there uh, which are based on, on the uh, various topics of uh, chemistry chemistry or recycling or the organic, organic synthesis or the theoretical chemistry etc okay then uh, uh, this is this is not uh, this is uh, 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 this is uh, this is of uh, that uh, uh, <coughs> uh, this is overall of uh, uh, that of uh, this conference we hello iba hello hello oh, yes thank you so Thank you so much, Nitin sir, for sharing the proceedings. Yes. Uh, thank you, Nitin. Now to proceed to introduce to people a radically different paradigm for life is to give the best response. So it's my great pleasure to welcome the honourable chairman of Vidya Prasarak Mandal, Dr. Vijay Bhaiyekar, who is gynaecologist by profession. He is also member of the Nor Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Most of his involvement can be seen in social work. Now I request Dr. Vijay Bhaiyekar sir to continue from here. So please. हेलो अपराजिता And definitely. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 the con the proceeding of this uh, uh, conference yes is the proceeding uh, of this lovely conference to be open yes thank you so much sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you sir sir yes sir yes sir sir yes 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 Uh, good morning to all. Let's join hands together and pay respect to our honourable late Dr. V. N. Medekar, who is founder member of Vidya Prasarak Mandal and creator of Island of Knowledge. 
details than this. Now, Now I would, would like, like to play, play the video. Thank you. Thank you, Sai, and thank, thank you, you everyone. everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. So, to know well about a conference on advance in chemical science and sustainable development, I would like to call Professor Dr. Anita Goswami Girimam, who is Associate Professor and IQC Coordinator of B. N. Bandorkar College. and a very live example of women empowerment ma'am please share your knowledge uh thank you hiba uh, with the virtual garland to our uh, beloved founder member dr v n bedekar sir and respected virtual dais patron of the conference dr v b bedekar chairman vidya prasarak mandal thane today's chief guest dr anthony melvin cristo who is world tracker and principal scientist of process research at glenmark pharmaceutical limited navi mumbai dr jayram khabragade chair of the conference and director the institute of science dr homi baba state university mumbai convener in chief and chair of the national conference captain dr mojes kulle ic principal Vidya Prasarak Mandals B N Bandulkar College of Science at Anomit Thane, Dr. Amba Vadekar, Head of the Chemistry Department and Vice Principal, Convener of this conference, Dr. Gayathri Parvade, Head of the Chemistry Department, Institute of Science, Dr. Homi Baba State University, Mumbai, and she is also Convener of this conference. Uh, our, our invited, invited speaker, uh, Dr. Shishat uh, Sir. Uh, Dr. Madhuri Pejal, Madam, Madam, and, and all, all invited speakers, uh, uh, member of organizing committee, student volunteers, and my dear students, our ex-principal uh, Venkata Raman sir, and, and all, all my dear, dear students. students. I welcome you here all to the national conference. We are delighted to have you with us, participate and share uh, in the conference. advances in chemical sciences and sustainable development which is going to help today as well and tomorrow you know uh, research is the base of any new concept coming of the science and whether it is in the field of science or technology medicine biology or in a commerce or art sectors hence our education system is very keen to develop the research mind among the teachers and the same is inculcated under, uh, to the students research gives a person uh, power of analytical thinking positive attitude hence our institute thought of opening the gate for young researcher by conducting conferences annually with two workshop our institute and its leadership believes in our brain which has capacity for learning that is virtually limitless which make every human potential genius hey It is striving for, for the promotion of, of research culture. College, college made efforts, efforts to develop, develop research culture among the students by giving the mini research project, uh, writing skill for a project as well as proposals, training on various mo research modules, interaction with scholars to various uh, clubs and committees, participation and presentation in various uh, conferences, workshop, and even explore them for the scientific exhibition, field studies, and many more. in college every department and movie clubs activities 
and uh, so that student get exposed to good research publication uh, along with that our college is also publish uh, isbn journal called jbnv research journal uh, is publishing every era of the uh, component and uh, research conference at uh, state national and international level uh, are organized every year along with the two preparatory workshops and in the current national conference an office first workshop was held on february 6 2021 it was inaugurated by uh, professor uh, garje who was who is a um, professor at chemistry department university of mumbai and also associate dean for science and technology uh, university of mumbai sir in uh, enlightened on the topic material for environmental remediation and sustainable development and in the same workshop the uh, person who is a heading uh, personal care division uh, research and development of ipco uh, dr anand malander his talk was excellent who uh, reached to the mind of the students and his speech on uh, fragrance and flavor uh, flavor application technology which signifies the economical growth of any countries and uh, it was excellent to and it uh, uh, hence uh, i thought to give some uh, uh, enlighten on the first and second workshop uh here also the our students and researcher they presented their research paper on the theme sustainability uh, uh, sustainability of drugs and dyes student perform experiment whatever facilities are available at their home and they completed during the lockdown period with logical thinking and enthusiastic mind the second workshop was held on 6th of march and it was inaugurated at the hands of professor malge who is joint director Uh, at uh, mumbai region here in the fourth session hemant hemant kumar who explained, who explained the ground, ground reality, reality of, the of the research, research infrastructure facility available at the outside and interior part, part of india, india. Uh, uh, he is a associate professor, professor at chemistry department at uh, gs uh, science art commerce college khamgaon buldhana and he also motivated student giving various examples and uh, given the talk on uh, synthesis uh, uh, can be uh, done with the help of green solvent with limited uh, uh, infrastructure facility he has also focused on the hydrocyclic compounds using mcr and catalysis a second speaker professor st muske who is heading in department of polymer and surface engineering at institute of chemical technology mumbai sir has given a multiple examples of uh, how the polymer can be used for the packaging material and what are the toxicity and how it can be how you can remove the toxicity and uh, to make the sustainable environment here yeah. all i would like to again remark on a uh, young body scientist who presented their ideas on various topics like the biodiesel recycling of chemical waste laboratory safety green synthesis and various estimation technology it indicates near fulfillment of research inculcation scientific and inductive thinking and it promotes the development of logical habit sorry among the learners you know everything thing is theoretically impossible and it is done in which uh, uh, proved by, by the student participation and, and of course they did go to their uh, enthusiastic teachers mentors philosophers and management who developed the infrastructure facility and created the conductive environment in the college and principal who encouraged them to participate in various activities uh, speaking, speaking about, about the our, our national, national conference today's national, national conference it, it, it is available, available to research the latest issues, issues innovative idea, idea unveiling and emerging research, research for delivering for the effective remedies for the sustainable development for the physical chemical biological and new added branches uh, meet with the different perspective and interdisciplinary approach to solve the problem of mankind and therefore the theme of the conference is on sustainable uh, advances in chemical sciences and sustainable development which include green chemistry chemistry of polymer nuclear science solid state chemistry economical viable chemistry biochemistry agriculture chemistry dairy chemistry food chemistry and many more and uh, of course technology and material methods are very much important in this field the main motive of this conference is to inculcate the scientific temperament among the young bodies 
because it brings all the researchers practitioner from academia and industry towards common goal of advances in chemical sciences and sustainable development we the organizing committee are happy to have brought some of them at the first and second workshop of the national conference and now we are meeting again today and tomorrow to discuss the cutting edge research share the ideas and common interests this experience helps the conference to interact to forum and encourage the strong level of dialogues and discussion this beginning will never stop till the uh, we are stimulating our goal, goals and catalyzing the research activity by taking help of chemical gems uh, which they are invited to our, our conferences so, so take, take the, the advantage of, of it and, and uh, uh, i welcome, welcome you all again and, and wish all the best to the our conference uh, for, for the dissemination of scientific knowledge concerning all, all the aspects of chemical as, as well as interdisciplinary approach i also thank uh, professor khobra gade professor malge gayatri madam for collaboration and co cooperation you know all chemistry the uh, chemistry state more energy you put into the bond the uh, harder it is to break so let us uh, start to to break the bond and form the bond thank you very much thanks once again thank you ma'am for sharing your valuable interview once again i have a very pleasant duty of introducing our today's chief guest, guest dr, dr. anthony, anthony malvin krastoso He is the world drug tracker and one of the most distinguished principal scientists. Yet, the occasion demands and here is a in brief. Dr. Anthony Malvin Krastu graduated from Mumbai University, completed his PhD from ICT Mumbai. Currently, he is working with Glenmark Pharmaceutical Limited. Research Center as a principal scientist in process research as at mahapay navi mumbai for the last 10 years so has worked with major multinational companies and has today industry experience is 30 year plus he has worked with notable scientists like dr k nagarajan dr rampal stephen etc he did custom synthesis of various multinational in his career like basf Pfizer, etc. Not only that, Sir has worked in drug discovery, natural product, generic, nutraceutical, GMP, pharma plant, API plant, etc. He has hands-on experience in initiation and developing novel routes for drug molecules and implementing them on commercial scale over a thirty-year tenure. and around 30 plus commercial product in his career for his pioneering work he has received over 22 awards and guest of honor including best world drug tracker award for lifetime achievement in pharma 2017 at taj land ends not only that lifetime achievement award by bio league at fourth summit on pharmaceutical drug design dubai uae also confirmed very prestigious igma award for contribution to society in pharma at indian drugs annual day 2018 vmcc iit bombay powai he was guest of honor and was passing felicitated by president indian drug manufacturers association and many more achievements but more than that this accolades he is an extremely decent and nice human being who has helped large number of people from all walks of life so you i request dr anthony malvin crastor sir to continue from you please sir thank you aparna sir for the lengthy uh, introduction uh, myself uh, i am dr anthony crasto actually what you see me you will see me a little moving i am actually 90% paralyzed 
and uh, I am wheelchair bound. I suffered a paralytic stroke, and I am not stable. But I am stable with my hands and uh, my talk and my brain. And uh, I thank Anita Madam of Panwadkar College for inviting me. Uh, I, I thank, thank uh, uh, the chairman, Dr. Vivi Bedekar. I, I thank the principal, Moses, well, Dr. Moses Kollet. Uh, then uh, also the head of the department, Dr. Amba Vedekar and Dr. Kograni from uh, Institute of Science. This conference uh, is so important for students because once they go out of this college, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Yes, 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 sir. This is so important because it the sustainability word translates straight into money. Now, today in the industry, you have to not only, you know, you have to uh, develop an environmental friendly process, but you have to reduce the cost, increase the profit. This will help our nation. Anything you do, end of the day helps our country, India. So, what you see, you know, green solvents, uh, when we talk, I am talking very, in a very simple fashion, like, Green solvents means you are protecting the environment. Recycling means you will save cost. You will uh, reduce the load on the environment. Synthetic steps, reduction in steps. Yes, you will save cost. You will save on chemicals. You will save on time. Everything, economy. And you will be able to scale up the drugs. Uh, today, you know, uh, we need Faviperavir, Faviperavir, Remdesivir, Remdesivir, and it is manufactured in our country. And we are giving, and we are giving it to the whole, whole world. What a, what a fantastic, fantastic thing. thing. See, uh, see, if you if go, you, go, you know, the, the, nowadays, nowadays you see a lot, lot of community kitchens. A lot, lot of people making uh, food for people, big, big handies. What are the ingredients? They are all natural. Simple ingredients, water is used. I would also recommend, you know, like uh, I would be happy if I can do a reaction in water, just stir, simple stirring and get the product out. But it is not easy. We have to focus and uh, we have to think a lot. We have to innovate. That is a big word. Innovate and uh, look for a process for any, 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 anything you do, which is cheap, cheap and over and over and friendly. And Safe, safe, economically, economically viable. viable, and this, this training, I feel, should, should start right, right in the college. In the mindset of the student, the teachers anyway are there to training. But what about you? You students have to think about the country, about your future, what your parents are investing in you. Come up with a plan that I will do my best when I go out in industry. I will be uh, up to date with my data, my basics, fundamentals. This is what I suggest. Uh, I will not take too long. Uh, when I hear Institute of Science, I feel very comfortable. You know, I, when I in the 1980s, after my uh, during my before uh, during my BSc and MSc days, I used to quietly get into the canteen and uh, act like a Institute of Science students. Uh, have some, you know, I'm involved. So that is what I remember about Institute of Science. I remember about, you know, Xavier's. Saint Xavier's, I used to do the same thing. But Anna, yeah, we, in just five to ten kilometers from my place, I used to watch it when I was always going to office, uh, take a bus from uh, that. You know, the, uh, there is a junction there. Take a bus, bus from there. there. I used to see the coffee. But, but uh, very, very funny, funny, I never, I never got, got a chance. chance. And today I am facing new people. Uh, Dr. Moses is there. Uh, Dr. Cobra uh, is there. All these people. people. And uh, feels nice. Feels very nice. And uh, I'm really good about Alina because she has chosen, you know, uh, for me to talk on this. Which is my daily bread and butter. I have to do it every day. 
for my company. And today we work on uh, this week is work from home. So I am always on a computer uh, doing new rules, hostings, new synthesis, NIP, uh, NIP rules, and all those things I do from the computer. So it is nice. So I thank everyone and uh, particularly the hosts, Aparajaya and Nibaba. Principal uh, Moses Kole, Dr. Moses Kole, Anita Ma'am, the uh, Chairman, Dr. Videkar, Head of the Department, Dr. Kubra Gale, and uh, one more person I am saying is, uh, the, uh, no, the Head of the Department, Dr. Ambao Videkar, and uh, from, uh, you know, uh, the Chair of the Department, Dr. Kubra. So, thanks, thanks a lot, lot everyone. everyone. And, uh, Thanks for saying. I am here. Have a lovely conference. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your fluent messages. And we are charmed by your sharp fluency. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's time to set the underlying tone and summarizes the core message our most important revelation of this conference. It's my pleasure to invite our chairperson of this session, Dr. Ratnamala Sunami Ma'am, Associate Professor, Chemistry Department, Institute of Science, Fort, Institute of Science, Fort Mumbai. Completed an MSc in Organic Chemistry from Brunei University, MSc in Subject Communication from YC MOU Nasir, Done PhD in Chemistry from Mumbai. She published about 22 research papers in journals and also successfully presented 27 papers in national and international conferences. Man guided two MSc by research students and five PhD students. Her research area is in synthetic and heterocyclic chemistry, pharmaceutical manufacturing, solvent extraction, coordination chemistry and in organometallic chemistry. And with her, also would like to invite co-chairperson, Dr. Poonam Kurma Ma'am. She is Associate Professor in Zoology and Head of the Environmental Science Department, then BSc, MSc and PhD in Zoology from Mumbai University. She published more than 30 international papers, guided many PhD students. Her research area is sustainable development. Now, would like to request chairperson and co-chairperson to grace the session. Thank you, Iba. Now here, good morning, everybody. My, my doctor, Dr. Ramana Sunami, Associate Professor, the Institute of Science, Mumbai. Today, I am here to introduce Professor Sajio. That is Professor of Chemical Sciences, ISR Kolkata. I am happy to introduce him. He did his BSc and MSc at Amravati University. He did PhD at IIT Bombay in 2004. He was postdoctoral fellow at Wiesman Institute of Science, Israel in 2004 to 2006. He worked as lecturer at University of Baroda from 2006 to 2007. He is associate professor in ISER, Kolkata, from 2013 till date. He published 79 research papers in different reputed national and international journals. His research interest is in conjugated polymers like organic heterol, thiophene and selenophene organic semiconductor devices. His research is focused on methodologies de development for new organic moiety, electrochemical and chemical polymerization for the synthesis of conjugated polymers, molecular designing to control the applications of polymers in organic semiconducting devices, Synthesis of conjugated macrocycles and small molecules and their applications and many, many more important research topics. Now I request Dr. Sajio Sadeh sir to give his talk on thiophene containing 
ladder type next generation organic semiconductor please sir, sir. thank you so much dr dhade sir so uh, am i audible thank you yes sir yes am i audible okay yes sir you are audible thank you you are audible thank you so much for your kind introduction uh, on on stage uh, i would like to thank uh, the organizers of this uh, conference professor ambaudi sir sir professor uh, bharat madam and my friend professor vishal maiwa so good morning all so here i am uh, sharing my sharing my slide anita madam jara mute kara na khub eco eco लैडर टाइप सिस्टम सो if i would like to tell about ladder type so if we take a simple example uh, polythiophene or the uh, oligothiophene for example in this structure we can in this structure we can see this two thiophene units is connected by one bond now what mean by ladder system ladder system will have this two unit connected by the two bonds so it look is principally looks like a ladder that each unit connected by the two bonds one of the very basic example is the acins acins like naphthalene anthracene and pentacene which is connected to each other in the new using so a so ladder, ladder type is nothing but this is a fuse molecule which are conjugated yeah. so my topic of this particular talk is the ladder type of system so going ahead Uh, if we think of the polymers it's long known that polymers are and the uh, work of these three people uh, higer magdermier and shirakawa what they did they showed that polyacetylene when we dope it it can show a conductivity like metal so that sort is term came conducting polymer and that discovery basically started the whole lot of new field now this molecule which are conjugated they are not only con con conducting but they are also semiconducting in the pristine state when we dope it it's a conducting sorry sir unmute kara tumhara ek nahi hai oh so i am unmuted no no sorry sir i am unmuted yes ma'am that is sir your audio is good yes okay thank you so there are two basically streams where we can use this molecule in pristine state or we can dope this molecule so in pristine state these are the, are the semiconductor molecule and the semiconducting property is even more interesting than the conducting property and based on this semi semiconducting property various devices basically studied on this organic semiconductors like field effect transistor organic photovoltaic and uh, we have this uh, light emitting diode uh, basically light emitting diode is already commercialized devices as there is lot of work going on uh, organic photovoltaic and is organic field dip transistor is already on the world of uh, being commercialized so our focus is mostly on the semiconducting organic system which can be used in the organic Now, if you see in the literature, we can have the various uh, conjugated systems. So you can start with simple polyacetylene, and there are many systems where we can use the aromatic and heteroaromatic monomer unit and polymerize to get the polymer. So as the, the, there are so many systems in the literature. but uh, there are very few examples which can perform well in the devices and one of the example is the poly 3 hexyl thiophene so this poly 3 hexyl thiophene is one of the important example of 
semiconducting molecule. Whereas another example is the polyethylene dioxythiophene. This system is very good to dope and it can be a good conductor. Kind of so here I would like to mention one point that changing this substituent from this exile chain to ethylene dioxy substituent, it changes its property. This is robust, it's, it's, it does not easily oxidize. Whereas this P dot can be easily oxidized due to the lone pair which is shared by this oxygen with this conjugation. So that means by changing the small substituent, we can change significantly the properties of this conjugated system. Now if you want to change the properties, that means if you want to tune the properties of conjugated systems, we can use these various concepts like extent of conjugation. Extent of conjugation means how long you can take, like you start from the butadiene to go to the hexatriene and so on. So that means if you extend the conjugation, you will get the uh, different properties and that way we can tune the properties of conjugated system. This donor acceptor concept is a very important concept. Donor acceptor means this basically coupling two units one unit which is electron rich and another is electron deficient. So this coupling basically evolve uh, basically frontier orbital in such a way that donor acceptor system uh, in as a result give us a small homoromo gap or the small band gap for the polymers. So another concept is a heteroatom replacement. For example, we can see we can use a benzene as a unit for making conjugated system. Benzene we can re replace by the pyrrole, we can replace by thiophene. That means thiophene, again we can replace thiophene sulfur with another atom like oxygen or selenium. So that way we can change the heteroatom and we can tune the properties of this system. And this main important aspects, what I am going to talk is the fuel structures. So fuel structure, very basic example is uh, basically benzene, naphthalene, anthracene, tetracene, and pentacene. Now, if you take the pentacene, where we have the five uh, unit, which is fused together, it's already very good semiconductor. It's one of the uh, largely studied molecule as an organic semiconductor. So, on basis of this uh, different aspects, our group work on the various conjugated system. One of the conjugated system where we have incorporated substituent in the form of uh, this five member thing. Now we can substitute this through two, two groups in the form of ring. And I will tell you in the next slide why we are inter interested in the particular this example. There is another uh, theme we are working where we want to put multiple heteroatoms. Like we can see this system which we have synthesized in the lab. There is just conjugation through this butadiene unit, but is connected to the various sulfur atom as well as selenium atom. Now, when we have the more heteroatom, so heteroatom in principle has a larger size and then uh, like sulfur and selenium, then there is a lot of intermolecular interaction. And this intermolecular interaction basically facilitate the charge transport, which is important for the organic electronic devices. So electronic devices made on uh, based on these organic semiconductors. So, uh, I, I was talking in previous slide why we interested in putting this five-membered substituent. Now, if you can see this three thiophene unit, and if you are putting this two simple methyl group, you can see this loses the conjugation. It's becoming a non-planar system. But when we put this five-membered ring, we need to if we see this structure, it's completely planar. Now, by putting this five-member ring, we basically uh, make the two substitution at three and four position. So if you put the one substitution, so then there will be the question of radio, radio chemistry. When we couple two unit, uh, that can they can couple if we consider one place is a head and another, another is tail. So it can couple as a head to tail, it can couple tail to tail. So then it will give the radio randomness in the polymers of the conjugated system. So that's why we have incorporated this five-membered ring. 
and we have exploited this particular molecule uh, with sulfur and selenium that is mean thiophene and selenophene we have basically studied it by spectro electrochemistry we have done lot of uh, electrochemistry now in this example we can see here uh, here what we did we have uh, made this donor acceptor system where this acceptor heteroatom we have replaced by nitrogen sulfur and selenium by changing one atom in this whole system it changes its color from red green to blue so that means we can create all three layers of the color wheel so it's a very important concept to connect this molecule and here we can see this uh, selenophin system when we polymerize on this ito electrode uh, it can act as a electrochromic material so this can uh, be blue in color at a pristine state when we dot it it become the chromic system we also studied this polymers in the field effect transistor so another uh, basically uh, continuation of this donor acceptor conjugated system here we can see by changing this uh, end group here by phenyl furan thiophene and e dot as well as this heteroatom in this acceptor unit we can basically get all sorts of color in visual range as well as it gives all kind of emission so this range of molecule by changing this carbon unit and by, by changing, changing this heteroatom, heteroatom it changes its color and emission property so we are also in, in interested in conjugated system which are cyclic now if you make the polymers there will be always the end groups we don't know what is the end group but when we make this cyclic system there will be no end group so this is very good model to study the long cyclic system long conjugated system but without end group and we also incorporated metal atoms in the conjugated system and this particular system shows very good uh, uh, whole mobility in the uh, field effect transistor devices so now we coming to this uh, basically uh, fuse conjugated systems one of the fuse system we have studied is basically this phenazine connected with this two thiophene <laughs> now this, now this particular, particular molecule when, when we crystallize, crystallize what, what we have, have find, find uh, what, what we have found, found that uh, this, this particular, particular crystal, crystal of this particular molecule and we have done this study with collaboration uh, with my colleague professor reddy and the professor chandrasekhar from university of hyderabad so uh, when we study this crystal these are flexible crystal we can make shape whatever we want like a bend shape so by using this crystal professor chandrasekhar made the devices which are the wave guiding devices so this wave guiding basically the property of molecule which guide the uh, light for example if we are flashing laser light here it will guide in particular direction and what we have seen in this direction this crystals is wave guide not only one direction but if you make this coupling between two crystal it can basically give the output it can be used as a directional coupler and this type of device is wavelength division multiplexing devices so what we did we started with very, very simple synthesis so we started with this dion benzodiethylene and coupled with uh, phenylin dionine and basically we have made this compound and what we wanted to make we wanted to make is another isomer for example if you consider this is the c mon orientation of this 2 thiophene so then we have made it here the n2 orientation okay. and now uh, we got these two molecules and if we see the uh, molecular orbital of these two molecules so this molecular orbitals looks very similar so that means if we study one molecule and if it is having the similar crystal structure second molecule should have the similar crystal structure because this interaction is again, again dependent on the molecular, molecular frontier, frontier, frontier frontier molecular, molecular orbital. orbital so uh, there is one report a, a report in the literature that they have changed this end group where they have uh, changed, changed this uh, benzene ring, ring with this pyridine and what they have seen they have seen that both this structure both the molecules had the similar molecular orbital 
So if you have similar molecular orbital and if they, they are similar packing, they will show the similar property. And what they studied that is both structure, both crystals of this molecule are basically the flexible crystals. So then we have uh, thought that this both the crystals should have the flexibility. And uh, when we saw uh, the both uh, molecule crystallizes in the orthorhombic polar space group, this particular P21221 uh, polar space group, and there's very nice arrangement of this molecule in the crystal structure. And which are the responsible? When we basically consider the flexibility, it's basically orienting molecule in a different way. So uh, the, this is the basically crystal structure and this crystal structure of this molecule, we can see this uh, molecules in the crystal stack in one direction, but there is a weak interaction between these two stacks. And this interaction, basically weak interaction, is basically responsible for the elasticity of this crystal. Now, if you can see in this uh, video, uh, in principle, crystals are brittle. We cannot bend it. But if you arrange the molecule, that means if we design the molecule in proper way, uh, it can be the flexible crystal. We can have this. So you can see this elastic bending in this particular crystal. And uh, when we study the fluorescent property, it is just a drop casting of these two solutions on the glass slide. And you can if you see this is molecule is fluorescent, where is this is non-fluorescent. And then we have studied in more detail. Again, this nitrogen sulfur interaction may be responsible for the non-fluorescent nature of this molecule. But what we see, we have taken this molecule to study further. And what we need, we have basically shine the laser light at the middle of this crystal. Now, now if you shine, shine the light, light on the crystal, crystal and, and if you see some, some light coming out of the end of the crystal, that is the indication that this molecule is propagating waves through the crystal. That means this crystal can be a waveguide. So then we have further studied these uh, crystals in more detail. And what we have seen that these crystals can basically self absorb the blue part of its fluorescence and that way is propagate the light in the and when we make this coupler it can give the uh, light splitting in two direction that means emission in two direction so that way uh, we can use this particular crystals as a waveguide in this uh, uh, wavelength division multiplexing devices so going ahead, uh, what we basically discussing here, we are discussing fuel system and we want to concentrate this fuel system for the, the use of, of this semiconductor in field defect transistor. Now when we consider this field defect transistor, these are the uh, examples of the molecule which perform very well in the devices. Now this molecule has uh, linear shapes. If you see this is linear, this is called quasi linear. Now, now when people, people studied these devices, devices of this molecule, this observed the degradation in the performance of the devices. And then reason came out is basically the molecular vibration. As this molecule are linear, they have translational and rotational freedom. So that can degrade the molecule slowly. So then they thought that we can make the molecule which are not the uh, play, uh, which are not linear, but it can be bent shape. So, so bent shape molecule in it surpass this uh, molecular vibration, and this basically saw this particular system works well in the devices when we have the bent shape. In addition to that, if we thought about the molecular orbitals of the molecule, we can go ahead for the next generation to create the better system for this Philippic transistor. And what they say, this uh, chrysinodithiophene, uh, when they studied the crystal structure, we can see here this thiophene 
sorry, this sulfur has the coefficient of highest occupied molecular orbital. That means homo coefficient is present on this sulfur. And that basically gives you the better whole mobility in uh, field effect transistor devices. So our thought is basically our molecule, what we have, we have synthesized these two molecule and we have look into the molecular orbital. So this molecule obviously is uh, satisfy the first condition that these are not linear, these are the bent shape, both the molecule. So second condition, we look at the molecular orbital. Now you, we can say this is the syn molecule and this is the anti molecule by seeing the orientation of sulfur. When we have the C molecule, so this sulfur is not involved in the homo orbital, where there is a coefficient of homo on this sulfur. That means this satisfied the second condition also. That means it has a bent shape, it has a good uh, coefficient of homo on sulfur. In addition to that, it also satisfies the third condition that if we we have made the crystals of this molecule and we have seen these crystals of. So what is our idea is that we can go to next generation by using the molecular shape engineering, molecular orbital engineering, and we can also include the crystal engineering part in that one. So that way we can create not only the uh, better performing molecules in the devices, but also we can have the flexible devices, which is very important for printable and flexible electronic devices. So what we basically did in previous that we already incorporated substitution as I talked with this one compared to this system where we don't have substitution or the substitution where we have at one position, this substitution is better. That means we can basically consider the substitution and molecular shape engineering. And what mean by the molecular orbital engineering example, which is a, a theoretical example uh, given by, by this radar group. So when we have this HOMO and LUMO in the crystals or in the solid state, it's basically this HOMO of one molecule in interact with the HOMO of nearby molecule. Yeah. And that interaction basically split this level in terms of energy. So this will basically be forming like a band type of structure. Similarly, LUMO also will form the band. So this splitting from one level to this one. So if this splitting is larger, that means you will have more, more interaction between the more molecule. That means charge transport will be more facilitated. That means it will give good electron or whole mobility in the devices, which is the basic criteria for the field of the transistors. So this splitting parameter they have studied by using the distance between these two molecules. And what we they have seen, they have seen that if you reduce the distance between two molecules, the splitting parameter increases. That means it will perform better. So it's again related to pi stacking. So if you have more efficient closer pi stacking, it will give you But at the same time, if we make this slip pi stacking, this, this splitting parameter basically uh, goes, goes to some, some lower value, value and higher value. value. So that, that way, uh, this is splitting, splitting parameter also, also depends on, on the, the relative position. position. Not, not only pi stacking, stacking but, but the relative, relative position, position of this is two units. units. And one of the example of this uh, relative splitting in this one, we, this is the basically in the schematic diagram of this uh, crystals, one direction, two direction and bulk crystal. Now if you consider this bulk crystal or it's just taking one dimensional crystal and if we have uh, this straight crystal, so it will have same distance between this pi stacking dimers but when we bend this crystal there will be one side this distance will increase other side this distance will become shorter that means so whatever splitting parameter we are losing here will be compensated at the other end that means bent structure should perform 
similar to the non bent structure that means its charge transport property should be same in the both cases and we have seen in the one of the example uh, in literature uh, this particular paper has reported this copper halo shining, shining wire, wire. Yeah, yeah. And, and they have they studied this field 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 in the straight, straight geometry, geometry as well as, well as this bend geometry, geometry. And what, and what they, they have seen is bent bent even more than the straight geometry. geometry. And, and they basically, basically systematically shown that, that this can be basically making these two interactions. One inside there will be shorter interaction and outside there will be longer interaction, which is compensating factors. So, so coming, coming back to our system, system this thylo where we have this five fuel unit. Uh, we, we wanted, wanted to make this molecule. Yeah, we have seen this is the this can be a good system for field effect transistor. Our first aim is to synthesize to synthesize this one. We can disconnect this molecule in these two ways. We can disconnect first at this position or first at this position. On the basis of this disconnection, we can have the strategy where we can incorporate first this thiophene unit on this middle thiophene and then acetylene. Other way around, we can have the acetylene first and then incorporate the thiophene. So we have basically seen in the literature and by using this literature procedure, we have followed the first method where we incorporated first thiophene unit and then basically incorporated acetylene. And this followed by this Benz annulation reaction. Benz annulation reaction in presence of this dbu base is basically giving formation of this benzene ring and this benzene ring we basically made both this scene isomer as well as, as, well as anti isomer we can, we can extend this to the seven seven ring system yeah. and then and then what the what we see, see in the literature, literature. so which, so which one, one isomer is better is the scene better, better or anti better, better. So there, so there is no, no uh, example, example that, that which, which is saying seen is better, better or identity is better. Or and and again, again, it is connecting with the uh, molecular, molecular shape and molecular orbital. So it is matching with the scene, scene will perform better or anti will perform better. For example, in this one, scene and anti does not show the difference. Whereas this system, anti is working well. And in this, this system, system scene is well. working well. So this so is again, basically, basically Corroborating our assumption that the molecular or orbital consideration is more important than the shape either it is. So going ahead that we have seen this uh, second generation and we also mentioned that this anti-isomer should have the better charge transport property. And we also study this crystal structure and this crystal cells indeed show the flexibility as we can see crystal we can bend it in the form of loop. And this flexibility is basically coming from the arrangement of molecule in this crystal. If you see this molecule stack in one direction through the pi pi interaction. And in between, there is this weak interaction. So now this weak interaction can be modulated, can be destroyed, or can be elongated. So that way, this crystal can be flexible. And indeed, it's flexible crystal. Similarly, this anti structure has a similar packing, and it's also give the similar kind of bending and similar kind of elastic bending. Now, what we wanted to do, we wanted to use this uh, molecules in the devices, but we could not do the devices. What we did, we basically did the theoretical study of this mobility in field effect transistor. And this graph basically shows this uh, uh, this uh, anisotropic uh, hole mobility. Now, in the crystal, which is the scene molecule, which this particular scene system, we have put these two substituent, one butyl and one hexyl, and both have a similar type of packing. Now, if if we see this packing, this packing is basically sheet type of packing. So all molecules are parallel, parallel of each other and for the charge transport property. And this we can see in the calculated values, this gives a very small hole mobility, 0 0.03.
so this is the unit of the whole mobility basically centimeter square per whole second so that more value indicate the more charge transport less value indicate less charge transport and further we study this anti isomer now anti isomer it's basically gives a very different packing than this one previous one we can see this is linear packing here we have the basically pi stacking in one direction but another direction there is a interaction between the face of one molecule to the end of edge of end edge of the another molecule and this type of crystal packing is basically called the pitch type pi stacking interaction in the crystal structure and this type of interaction are good for the charge transport property and indeed when we calculated the charge transport property this value is coming out 3.25 and 4.77 so this is basically very good value this is a says with this value is basically a uh, important for the uh, field effect transistor devices so now this is just comparison this value is basically more than two order less than the anti isomer so that proves that these three concepts we can couple together and create new interesting and important molecule in the devices for the uh, organic field effect transistor devices now uh, going ahead what we thought in the previous uh, we have basically follow the first rule so then what we thought that can we use the second rule if we make the second rule it can be more versatile to create the more uh, acid type molecule like a type conjugate molecule which is not reported in the literature and there is also synthetic method available for this molecule where we have thiophene with the two alkyl and connected with the standard group so 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 our first task is to make this diastanyl diacetylene uh, substituted so we started with with diacetylene substituted diacetylene and then we treated with n butyl lithium followed by the triethyl tin chloride so what we have seen butyl lithium equivalence of 10 we are not getting the diastanyl product is the only most substituted product so then we thought that the nmn lithium may be do do get you to charge and then high high phase is not not stabilizing so let's use some reagent lithium reagent we will have a coordinating site and obviously the lda so then we have used this lda and then when we use five valent lda we have got nearly quantitative yield of this diastanyl compound And when we when we check check in our work, this is basically does does not gain any purification, and it's more than nine 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 percent pure pure. Just just up our work workup. So so we have taken this molecule further further to synthesize basically the stellate coupling, and this stellate coupling standardizes condition. We need a lot of time because this is not a very general condition. This is power in presence of triphenyl phosphine palladium zero. so this reaction works well and we can see we can change the substitution from the il electron donating il electron uh, il electron, electron withdrawing of substituent, substituent and, and, and various hetero hetero aromatic system and we can create all sorts of this is a of this complemented system now the next step was to use this Uh, alkyl using the dbu and amp as a solvent and in the end when we proceed further we got this particular lorry this five ring rings and and in all cases we got got good yield further going further going we achieve the achieve the remo chemistry in this synthesis when we use the naphthalene as a substituent we only is got only one isomer and this other two isomer we did not get we can just see here that due to this interaction between this butyl group and this phenanthene group this can deviate the plane of so that way we can also create helical in the conjugated system 
So going further, what we did, we have ruminated this pentaacin and then again couple by using this the 13. So it looks like a half cycle. And there is a possibility that we can make the full cycle by using the systems. It's a ladder type of macro cycle. We have seen, we have actually developed the crystal structure of this anthracene substituted. Uh, the halo structure, but this is the structure four pair of in a numbers, and this is shows this minus plus, plus, plus orientation of this. this. There are four characters, and this four characters we can assign to the material. So there are two in a pair in the crystal. We did not attempted to materialize this helical structure in pure chiral form or pure in a so, being, so going for, uh, uh, what, what we thought, thought of, of can, can we explain this strategy to make the conjugate or ladder polymer, polymer. So, so for ladder polymer, we basically need the two unit to grow in it out of on this substrate. And then we need the modeling reaction with uh, this monostanine. And what, what we have seen is that this is particular this benzene benzene give, does, does not give this good product because we can see here the, this benzene is hexa substituted so there can be a lot of steric bubble so it did not to give good yield but when we use this naphthalene system we got a reasonable yield in this reaction and then we have carried forward this particular reaction to by using this with this ethyl hexyl group and indeed, when we did this reaction and post polymerization reaction, we could get this uh, ladder conjugated polymer. And we are basically characterizing this particular polymer. So, in summary, so what we idea of what can be the next generation conjugated system, conjugated semiconductor, which is of ladder type. And we also study this. Uh, molecules uh, by using the DFT, uh, not in devices actually. And here we have developed this methodology, which is very general to create the, the thinosine as well as ladder polymer. My thanks to my collaborators, uh, students, former students, and uh, some of my students already they got the position in various academic uh, industry. And these are the groups. So, so whatever work I have shown here, most of the work has done by Abhijit, Abhijit Agrawal. And uh, I thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving the valuable insight of the topic, hyophen containing ladder type next gen organic semiconductors. And I'm sure your address will help us a lot. Thank, Thank you, you once again. again. I, Seema Pal, pursuing MSc Part 1 from Institute of Science, Mumbai. It is my privilege to highlight the achievement of a chairperson, Dr. Dr. Moitri Shah, Ma'am, Dr. Moitri Shah, Ma'am. Ma 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 she served as paper setter for common entrance examinations for MSc Biotechnology and MSc Herbal Science in Birla College of Arts, Science and Commerce. And also for MSc Part 2 at Sun. She has been nominated as Associated Editor of the research journal Bio Nano Frontiers. She is Life Member of Society for Science and Environment and also Life Member of Mangrove Society of India, MSI. She also serves as a member of NGO World Vision. She has done government and non-government many research projects and published 28 research papers in rep reputed publications and also presented 15 research papers in national and international conferences and has and guided one She has published two books, My Day with Cancer, in which she has indeed boldly designed her experience at Miss Roller Coaster of Emotions and another book named the Textbook One from She has been recognized with several awards, including Certificate of Excellence for Outstanding Research Papers in the Field of Life Science by Bionan Frontiers Journal of Science and Technology. 
distinguished as best teacher award by international society of science and technology mumbai the award by mahila mahotsav organized by prarambh academy science our co-chairperson dr sandeep kandal has done phd in chemistry from institute of chemical technology he has qualified net set and gate examinations He stood first in MSc Analytical Chemistry, Pune University. Currently working as assistant professor at BPM's B. N. Mandukar College of Science, Pune. He worked as junior scientist, Analytical Development Laboratory, Lupin Pharmaceuticals Limited. In 2010 and 11, he was awarded with G. M. Abhyankar Research Presentation Award at Institution Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai. His core research area is research. Area is nanotechnology, green chemistry, heterogeneous catalysis, development of magnetically separable materials, organic synthesis. In total, he has thirteen research papers published. Seven of his work research has been published in national and international journals, and has done four research presentations. Further, I would request our chairperson and co-chairperson to carry forward the session. Thank you, dear. <coughs> Good morning to all. I hope all yes. are safe. And Good morning, morning, madam. Thank you, sir. Uh, I hope all are safe and healthy because if we are safe and healthy, we can talk about sustainability. Today, the new normal de uh, demands that we meet online, and here I am to read the bio data of Dr. Vivek uh, Polshetiwar. Nano catalyst is uh, becoming a strategic field of science since it represents a new way to meet the challenges of energy and sustainability. These challenges are becoming the main concern of global vision and the societal changes in the world economy. These are not my words; these are the words of Dr. Vivek, and we are privileged to have him with us today. Welcome, sir. Dr. Vivek completed his uh, PhD in 2005 from DRDE Gwalior MP in the subject of chemistry. After that, he worked as postdoc in France and USA. He did his postdoc from SCM France and, and was, was uh, working, working as, as a research, research associate in US Environmental Protection Agency, Cincinnati, USA. He says. Uh, catalysis research became one of the most powerful tool to take on the challenges of energy and sustainability. Dr. Vivek was also visiting researchers in LCOMS Institute Lille Lyon in France, and he worked as an assistant professor and senior scientist in Catalysis Center in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. He started his own group in 2009. Dr. Dr. Kapil back, back in, in India joined as leader in IIA. He is presently in Nano Catalysis Laboratory Division of Chemical Sciences, PIFR, Mumbai. He and his group is working on the development of novel. Uh, novel, novel nanomaterials as catalysts catalyst to tackle climate change. He has, he has published, published nearly 115 articles in H index 54, with the H index 54, and around 12,600 citations in a reputed journal in PNC, Nature Communication, Chemical Science, ACS Nano, ACS Catalysis, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, several of his articles are rated as top 10, top 5. Hot articles and appear on journals front cover. And Dr. Vivek says, nano catalyst, uh, nano catalysis can help design catalysts with excellent activity, greater selectivity, and high stability. Their properties can easily be tuned to tolerate uh, by tailoring the size, shape, and morphology of particular nano material. His recipient of Prestigious ORI SC Research Fellowship in US EPA. He was awarded top 25 cited author in 2011 in Tetrahedron 
and, and young scientist award at BSL 2012. 2012. He received an Asian Rising Star Lectureship in 15th uh, Asian Chemical Congress ACC Singapore in 2013 from Nobel Laureate Professor Ich Nigishi. In uh, 2015, he was admitted as Fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry, UK, and he was awarded the Bronze Medal by Chemical Research Society, India. He was also recognized as Emerging Investigator Material uh, Science in 175 Faces of Chemistry by RSC, UK. He was awarded the prestigious Material Research Society of India, MRSI Medal 2019 and Fellow Maharashtra Academy Science of Science. Uh, very recently, in 2020, he received the Young Research Award in Nanoscience and Technology by DST, Government of India. And in January, that is January 2021, Dr. Vivek was elected as Academy of Science, LASI. Dr. Vivek's research interests are in the area of advanced nanomaterial, nanocatalysis, and climate change. He believes that next generation catalysts can be developed by shape and morphological control of nanomaterial, which will allow preferential exposure to of the active site. His, His final, final goal is to push, push the, the boundary of catalysis, catalysis uh, research, and uh, research to develop nanocatalysts based on non-precious metals. Welcome, sir. We are all eager to hear from you today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Saha. Saha. Very, very detailed, detailed uh, bio. I mean, it will be the first time I received such a detailed um, description of what I did. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the organizer for uh, inviting me to this conference. And today I'm going to talk about the sustainability in terms of uh, climate change, how we can sustain the, the climate and keep it livable to, to all of us. So let me share the uh, slides. So the uh, I guess, I guess we, you, you can, can see, see my slides, slides I, guess. I guess. Can anyone confirm? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so uh, today I'm going to talk about nano chemistry for sustainable development. Conference is about the sustainable development, and uh, I will explain how we we are using a concept of nano chemistry or nanotechnology to achieve those sustainable processes. Uh, before that, I'd like to just ask one simple question. Uh, what, what was, was the most important innovation of 20th century? I guess everyone will have uh, different answers, but chemists will have this answer, which is the Haber-Bosch ammonia synthesis. You know, a simple catalytic reaction that changed the world. So it's the reaction of nitrogen with hydrogen, right? We think nitrogen is very unreactive, but a Haber in 1909 showed that one reacts nitrogen with hydrogen using osmium as a catalyst at very high pressure, 100 bar, very high temperature, 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. But then he was able to produce ammonia, which is the essential chemicals to have fertilizers. And then we know more of the fertilizers, better the yield in your farming, and you can provide more and more food. So this fundamental breakthrough, which happened in 1909 by Haber, then he collaborated with a Bosch, who was a chemical engineer in, in BASF, one of the very popular chemical company. And just in you know, uh, five years or four years, 1909 to 1930, they were able to convert these fundamental research into a process, a economically viable, sustainable process, process and which, which was, was then able, able to, to provide, provide lots of fertilizers. And because of more and more fertilizers easily available, they were able to produce large amount of the food. So you can imagine without the haber wash process, we would have only two thirds of the amount of food that we have today. And even after 100 years of its discovery in 1909, now 2021, 
2021, 100, more than 100 years, we are still dependent on this process. Apple Apple Watch. Watch. Without Apple Watch, Watch, we cannot have a sustainable life. We cannot, have, we cannot provide, provide the food for the, the ever growing population. population. And, and because, because of that, both of them, Apple and Watch, both of them were Nobel Prize, uh, independent Nobel Prize, 1918 for Apple and 1931 for One for the discovery of the process, another one uh, for you know taking that process to uh, to a sustainable commercial scale. You by developing various high pressure reactors, which was not that easily available during those days. So what, what happened, happened because of the high pressure process, process is now we are able to produce lots of food. The yield in the farm increases because of the easy availability of the, of the fertilizers. And now you can see because Vivek. of that Vivek, our Vivek. population jump. Hello. Ah, uh, Vivek, Vivek, uh, can you start your slideshow because your slides are not changing. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Ah yes, yeah. Okay. okay. Like, let me like, do it let me again. Do it again. Which slide? Which you slide saw, you saw? Uh, uh, which you just you yeah just started huh? so that one it was just uh, showing. Ah okay. Ah, I went to different slides then. Okay. Let me do it other way around. So, do you see the slides now? Which slide you do see, Vishal? Yeah, no, no. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank God. Okay. So I was talking. I already spoke about the Hyper Boss. So this you now see the Hyper Boss slides, right? Yes. 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 How, how they, they reacted, reacted in nitrogen, nitrogen with hydrogen, hydrogen and how they then converted this fundamental discovery into a commercial scale uh, for which they got a Nobel Prize. And then even now after 100 years, we are using this cyber boss process to produce the ammonia, giving the fertilizers, uh, and then that allowed us to produce large amount of the food. And now because of the large number of food, uh, you, you can, can see now it is in the population. So I am now on the slide, slide number three. Uh, you can, can see, see the slide, right? It's changing. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So, so, so you can, can see clearly now the, the increase in the population. Not dramatic increase, right? It's like some sort of uncontrolled chain reaction without any determination, and which is and which is which is increasing like anything, like anything. Ah, so that means ah, so that means more and more and more food, food. That means that more and more and fertilizers. That means more and more ammonia. Ammonia. Still, still depending on the one single reaction that you have for processes. Now, if we ask again a question. Which is what are the challenges of 21st century? We know that Haber Bosch was one of the achievement of 20th century. So, what are the challenges of 21st century? You know, you will come back to the same reaction. You will say, that is, I will say that Haber Bosch ammonia synthesis is a challenge. Now, you will say, why? It is providing us the, the fertilizers, the food indirectly. Then, why this is a challenge? Challenge is because. 1% of world's total energy is being used by this one single reaction. You cannot imagine something like that, right? How come one reaction, a one process? The reason is all the fertilizer, majority of the fertilizer is coming from the ammonia, uh, is coming from the Haber Bosch process. So we are dependent on our processes, more of the population, more of the fertilizer. So you have to keep increasing the use of the Haber Bosch and then when it finally high pressure. pressure. So all, all of, of that needs very high energy. energy. Now, you see, another serious issue with the Hubble Wash is it emits large amount of CO2, say 450 million tons of CO2 in, in every year. That is like 1% of the global annual CO2 emission. Again, Again one, one reaction, reaction emitting 1% of the CO2, CO2 uh, which, which is again a crazy number. number. Now, you, you may think, think that, that why will there be CO2 because it's against nitrogen, nitrogen and hydrogen? hydrogen. Right, right, but, but hydrogen, hydrogen is coming, is coming from, from the steam engine reform, reform from non fossil fuels. So, methane plus water, water gives you CO plus H2, and, and that CO again reacts with water over the gas reaction, reaction to produce CO2 plus H2. So, that CO2 is in large quantity. quantity. You, you can, can see the CO2 and water coming out. out. So, you, you produce, produce large amount of CO2, which is, which is the main, uh, uh, way, main cause of the global warming, and I'm also using large amount of pro energy of, of the world. So, in addition, in addition to this particular, this particular process, process, there are large, 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 large number of things. Think about cement, cement factories, iron, steel, you know, you know uh, ammonia, synthesis. Almost everything that you see around produces the CO2. Everything which is artificially yeah. happening produces the CO2. Right? So we need a system which can sustainably capture the CO2. And ideally, the ultimate solution is 
Once you capture that CO2, you convert that CO2 into useful chemicals. Right, so one CO2 molecule causing the, uh, obviously there are some several other uh, greenhouse gases, but CO2 is, is the one which is which has a large lifetime, very stable, uh, and is the main cause of the global warming. And I guess uh, I'm not going here, but we all know that why CO2 is uh, the, uh, part of the greenhouse gas, because the, we get the sun energy the, from the sunlight, a large amount of which get absorbed by the Earth's surface, and then it emits the that secondary radiation, the, the earth surface uh, in the form of IR radiation, let us say, and those uh, thermal radiations or secondary radiation should go out from, from our environment. And that's how we maintain the temperature up of the planet Earth. But somehow, because of increase in the greenhouse gases, mainly CO2, uh, that energy is getting trapped and uh, getting emitted back to the environment or getting trapped into the environment, and that's why more the greenhouse, more energy will be trapped, uh, these thermal radiations will be trapped, and you mix, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, that's why there is global warming, which is causing the climate change. Right, you can see the uh, rise of carbon dioxide. Until 1950, uh, it was always below 300 ppm, but now after the industrialization, after we started using the fossil fuels and different chemical technologies to produce more and more chemicals and products and foods, you see a, a sharp increase. Right now, we are around 415.39 ppm uh, of CO2, which is again increased. Now, this is in 2019. Uh, they keep updating and capture because of the trapping of those secondary radiation. You can see uh, uh, the temperature of our globe, right? So, and, and I also showed these um, solar irradiance, even year average, which indicates that the amount of solar energy that Earth is getting is nearly the same all these years. So, it's not about that we're getting more energy from the sun, and that's why it's the global warming. It's clearly because of the CO2 and other other greenhouse gases. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a cartoon, uh, Arctic sea ice, uh, the melting of the Arctic sea ice. Look at the y-axis. It's in millions of kilometers. It's a huge number. Seven millions of kilometers. And from 1980 to now, this, this data is up to 2015, you reach around you know, 3.5 millions of kilometers. Half of the ice is already melted. And now you can imagine temperature is increasing. Ice is melting, uh, sea level will rise. Right? And you can see again, sea levels are rising from 1880 to 2017. Uh, you can see a systematic increase in the sea levels. And there is this uh, 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 um, uh, you know, computational study or some sort of a simulation where they say if we continue the way we are right, in terms of producing the CO2 and not capturing them, then sooner or later, most of the cities like Mumbai will be flooded with the water. We already get flooded with the water uh, whenever there is very heavy rain, but it will increase every year. Uh, and and this has to do, one has to really take some action, some serious action, rather than only talking and advertising that we are really doing something. We have to really come up with some sustainable pro processes to capture the CO2 and, and then ultimately convert the CO2 fuels and chemicals, right? Make the CO2 as your carbon source rather than the waste. And this is something a uh, chemist has to do a uh, very urgently, right? So in addition to the environment, so there's a recent study where they found that the diseases are hidden in the ice and they are waking up. You know, uh, look at any of the data. So like two years that uh, in uh, the NASA scientists discovered uh, a bacteria which is 8 million year old. Uh, several other, and they observed that most of these bacteria are resistance to the top, you know, top antibody, antibiotics. So if they come into our life, the way Corona COVID-19 is, uh, uh, is creating a, such a serious issue now, still we know that the, the, uh, there was some understanding, as, there was a, some science about the, uh, the coronavirus family was known to humans, not, was known to the scientists and that helped us to come up with a say drug or a vaccine. But think about a, a virus or, or a, a bacteria which is unknown to us. We don't know uh, how they how they act. We don't know any signs of them. And if they invade us, they infect us, then then it will be even crazy situation than what we are facing now. So you can clearly see a, a connection of climate change with the with the health in addition to the environment. Right. So now, is it too late to stop the climate change? Uh, no. We can do something. There is a two two thought one. One can say, oh, like the most complex form of a matter in the universe is on course for extinction. So we are going to extinct, so just draw and, and wait. 
or we human try to follow the rules of the nature right? we try to produce less, less waste we try to reduce most of the things the way we used to live our life uh, long ago we can do that at the same time we can develop the technologies which will also help us to then you know, tackle the climate change in the future, future artificial, artificial solutions so we can then use sunlight and alternative energies to play a role in, in capturing the CO2 and converting the energy to chemicals so skip this skip this so yeah so what is the uh, carbon neutrality uh, the path india's path for reducing the process where you are not producing any CO2 in the environment so best way is to stop using all the possibilities right we use the solar energy uh, wind energy possibly nuclear energy and and then there is no carbon emission right and that's how i really solve the problem but, but remember that we have only produced large amount of co2 that then we start 100% with the renewable resources there is the co2 that are very clear and uh, most serious thing is even now 70% of our energy is coming from carbon based uh, uh, fuel oil coal 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 you know gases and only say 30% right now is the renewable energy so and this is not going to change that right like, it will take but it's time now that we have to come up with our own science and our own discoveries and then take them uh, to uh, transfer them to new technology which can be really used sustainably uh, uh, in our society for our society so uh, technically today i'm going to talk about how to capture the co2 before it releases to the environment then uh, i'll also talk about how to use uh, how to use that capture co2 and convert that into say fuel so the co2 becomes your fuel now and if time permits i will also touch upon solid acids and uh, to convert waste plastic to chemicals and then defect to nano silica to to so i already finished most of my time so i will be quick uh so we'll skip nano part i guess everyone knows the nano nano is the material which is at a nano scale and they show unusual properties you know the the optical properties changes gold looks yellow in color but at a nano scale they change the color because the electron cloud of these uh, now start resonating with the light rather than reflecting the light melting point changes you know tensile strength changes all of that can be connected to the high surface area a more number of atoms on the surface when you go to the nano scale number of dangling bonds surface energy quantum confinement so I'm, I'm not going to explain this to save the time and to come back to the co2 story what we need now whether i want to only capture the co2 or i want to capture and convert co2 to fuel say methane your cng right uh, which allows you to run the car uh, one thing one that thing we need that you need is a high surface area, area for the area using using which, which either, either develop, develop the co2 solver, solver, solver material which can capture the co2 only, only or, or, or a catalyst can, 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 can and convert, convert the co2 to the surface so so this is a material that we discovered in the lab this is called the This, this is a nano silica, you know, sand on the beaches. This is a silica as I told, but this is a nano scale having this radioactive fibrous morphology, and that's why we call it the DFNS. One can tune the particle size, size from 50 nanometer, 100 nanometer, high surface area, 500, 100, 100 nanometer, high surface area, 500, 100, 100 nanometer, gram, gram, excellent, excellent stability, stability, up to 800, 800 Celsius. You can make stability up to 130 megapascals. That means one can use these materials to develop high temperature processes, high pressure processes. And ideally, it's easy to synthesize. If you want to synthesize in your lab, what you need is a round butter flask, some heater, some mixer. So, you, if you want, you can use this nature protocol where we gave a detailed process of making these materials with different sizes. Even the high school labs can make this if they have the heater and and the mixer. 
So these are the SCM images indicating that they, they are these fibrous thing, which is like more like petals of the flower rather than the hairy fibers. And this is the, the mechanism where we use the CTAB as a template molecule. Maybe I will show you the animation. So these are the template molecule CTAB having this polar head, blue ball, and then the zigzag 16 times a non-polar tail. And when we, when, you know, whenever we add these surfactant molecule in the solvent, uh, they form a micelles. Here, the concentration of the CTAB is such that they form a lamellar phases. And we are using mixture of water and xylene, so polar non-polar solvent. These red balls, or red molecules are co-surfactant stabilizing the, the CTAB surfactant. And these stabilize, uh, you know, um, lamellar phases, then form a microemulsion droplet. Why continuous microemulsion droplet? Because we are using water and xylene. Uh, and these, these microemulsion droplets that you see are, are just made of water, xylene, and CTAP, right? Uh, these are not our particles, ideally. These are the template, nano template. Nano -template. And in the water channels in, in these droplets, we grow the silica. So if we keep these particles away, these droplets away, then the droplets are small, so I get a smaller nano particles. But then we also learn how to merge them together without changing the internal structure. And if you merge some of them together, then I will get a bigger droplet. And that allowed then us to get a nanoparticle of a silica size. That's how we were able to control the particle size from as small as 50 nanos and 1.2 micron, 1200 nanos. So this, this is our invented material. We have several patents now, and more than 150 groups worldwide is using this for many of the applications. You know, CO2 mitigation, catalysis, silica, but you can convert this silica in hydrophobic surface, hydrophilic surface, semiconducting by putting the TIO2. Metallic by coating is a gold, you know, you can attach drugs, you can attach enzymes, organic molecules. So that allowed the use of this material. So how so then that was a support doesn't really capture the CO2 the way we wanted it. So we want to now convert that into some sort of a CO2 capture material. So uh, what we wanted then, we wanted whether I can capture the CO2 as soon as it generates within the reactor. It doesn't need to come out and pop up. Uh, 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 uh. they start capturing around 35 weight percent of the CO2, which is one of the highest value that we found. And there was also this uh, an, uh, interesting understanding that with every cycle, the CO2 capture increases and it stabilizes up to fourth cycle because now material has become more and more pure when I do this cycle, uh, adsorption, desorption cycle. And it stabilizes at a fourth cycle in terms of capture capacity or the kinetics. So we try to explain why the uh, capture capacity is better at the fourth cycle by, by showing that they are more purified at the fourth cycle by the powder XRD as well as the XPS data. And you can see now, uh, one, of the, one of the serious issue with this lithium silicate is the lithium. And ideally, this is unsustainable process now because we know with the shortage of lithium, we are already trying to replace lithium ion batteries with some other sodium ion batteries or some other, other metals. The same issue here, right? Why do I use the lithium then? 
I think we're trying to replace lithium by sodium, potassium, magnesium, these cheaper and easily available metals, but it's not working. It's not happening yet, although we have not give up, but we're working on it. But there, there could be one more solution to make the process sustainable, which is I keep using the lithium. I keep using the lithium silicate for hundreds of cycles. Then even if there's a lithium silicate for a large number of cycles, the process will be sustainable. And that's what we showed that up to 1200 degrees Celsius, that means at least for 1200 degrees Celsius, you see the capture capacity is stable, right? It's, a, it's like a up is absorption, CO2 desorption, absorption, desorption, and you can see we can do that up to 200 cycles. That means one can ideally, this is so that one can ideally do this for thousands and thousands of cycles. And this makes the process sustainable, even if there is a lithium, right? And then we try to uh, explain why our material is better over the reported material which produces this double shell model of lithium carbonate and lithium silicate. And because of the lithium carbonate shell, CO2 desorption as well as adsorption becomes restricted. Whereas in our case, we have this mixed phase model where you can see the lithium carbonate is cover, you know, uh, surrounded by lithium silicate and lithium arthur silicate is surrounded by lithium carbonate. So their interaction is easy, uh, more efficient uh, during the desorption. And that's why you keep regenerating the pure lithium silicate and you keep capturing the CO2 to get the mixed phase model. So we use this uh, XPS depth profiling to explain that, yes, there is a mixed phase model, prove that there is a mixed phase model. And we can see at any, any, at any depth. So you just slice the, uh, the sheets and see whether you have both lithium silicate and lithium carbonate. And we observe that at any depth, we always have these lithium arthosilicate and lithium carbonate, indicating that it is a mixed phase model indirectly. Right, so that's about the CO2 capture. Now the next one is how to convert the CO2 to useful chemicals and at the same time how to harvest the solar energy to, to, to convert the CO2 to fuel using solar energy as an as a energy source. So there we use the concept of uh, uh, surface plasma on resonance, you know, the, uh, the gold or the silver when, uh, when you go to the nanoscale, when you prepare a nano gold or a nano silver, several others. The electron cloud on these metallic golds start oscillating, and at one particular wavelength of the light, they start resonate. Uh, they resonate with that particular light, and that light energy get absorbed, and that is called some sort of a that is known as a surface plasma resonance (SPR). And and then this is one of the very unique technique to you know harvest the solar energy. Uh, so that's what we wanted to use. Uh, I skip this part; it's more technical. Uh, only challenge that we found that if I just take the, my DFNS and put the gold nanoparticle, the light absorption is is only good in, uh, at a wavelength of 560 nanometer and there is a weak absorption in the other region. What we wanted is some sort of a broadband light absorption so that I can harvest entire visible spectrum, more photon harvested, then you get a more heat or a more light, uh, more electrons, hot electrons. So to achieve that, we did this uh, cycle by cycle growth where Rather than tuning the particle size, we tune the distances, the gaps between the gold particles, uh, because there is a theory which says that when the gold particles are coming closer and closer, the electron cl cloud of the gold nanoparticles start interacting with each other, known as plasmonic coupling, and then they together resonate with one particular wavelength of light, and that allows you to then have a broadband light absorption. So with that concept, we prepared these silica-supported gold nanoparticle with different distances, different gaps. Uh, these are the uh, TM images indicating that, yes, when you go from C0 to C1 to C3, C4, C6, particles are coming closer and closer, and somewhere C6, they are completely connected. And you can see now, because of these interparticle plasmonic coupling, as well as the particle size distribution, we now obtain a black gold, a gold radiation, no doping, no functionalization. It's just a metallic gold. Still, it is black in color because now it absorbs most of the visible light and even a near IR light. So because of the interparticle plasmonic coupling. So it's not about the color, it's a black, but the black color is because of the light absorption, uh, uh, better light absorption. And that will help us now to harvest more sunlight and use that photon to convert into hot electrons or heat, which will allow us to then use them for a different catalytic application. Right, so, so the idea, uh, the, the, one of the, the concept here is that once these blackboard absorbs the sunlight, the uh, that energy get damped into the material and it, it excites the electron from the Fermi level of the metallic gold to higher excited state. We call them the hot electrons and one can use these hot electrons to do some electron assisted chemistry. But then if the electron relaxes by electron electron collision and then electron phonon, the vibrating atom collision, that entire energy is lost in the form of a heat and you produce, you know, localized heat onto the gold surface. 
So we wanted to use that heat to you know um, heat the water. So what we did, we took the water, put the blackboard exposed with light, and you see we started heating the water very quickly. So C4 heated the water to 90 degrees Celsius, you know, in just six minutes. And you can imagine one can use this technique to convert the seawater into drinkable water. You take the seawater, put the black gold, expose with light, evaporate, condense the, the vapors, you get the pure water. You may say that, oh, the black gold must be expensive. Why do I, how can I put that into the seawater? True, we're trying to, again, replace the black gold with a cheaper one. But again, there is another way of making this sustainable, which is I keep using the black gold for a large number of times, right? This is the catalytic process. So ideally, I can use the black gold, and black gold is very stable. So we can use it for large number of cycles, large number of times, and that will make the process sustainable, even if gold is expensive. Okay, so since my time is already up, I will skip this part, and I will directly go to the catalysis part where, yeah, so where we, I wanted to show you the how we use these black gold to convert CO2 to methane. You know, methane is the CNG gas that you feed in your car. Uh, uh, so, so CO2 plus water, yeah, both is free, uh, both are free. And then you have DPCCX, which is your black gold. Visible near IR is a visible, uh, the sunlight. So you have sunlight, water, CO2, is some sort of artificial photosynthesis, and you're getting methane. And you can see our catalyst shows excellent activity, uh, 10 times better than the normal gold particle, the black gold. So uh, clearly, one can say that I can, you know, ideally I can fill the CO2 in my car and put this catalytic reactor pass the CO2 into that reactor, you already have the moisture in your environment, sunlight is there, expose the catalytic reactor with sunlight, convert CO2 to methane, now methane is your CNG, the methane and you get the energy, you drive the car or do some other function and the CO2 that is produced by burning methane again goes back to the catalytic reactor which is working with the water and sunlight, you get again get back the methane. Imagining that this is a 100% efficient process, obviously this will not be happening, but it, it may one day. Then you can see this is a process where no CO2 is emitted into the environment, no methane is emitted into the environment, and CO2 becomes uh, uh, some sort of uh, your fuel. So maybe one day you will fill the CO2 in your car and done. You keep driving the car until there is a sunlight. So something like this is very much possible, at least at a lab scale. Obviously the values on the y-axis is very low, 1.5 micromole per gram. Say in six hours is extremely poor number of search, good for the, the basic research, but this has to be, if one, one, one wants to make this process sustainable, then these numbers on the y-axis has to be in, you know, hundreds of millimoles or thousands of millimoles and very, very fast kinetics. And if that happens, which is ideally possible, simply one has to simply design a unique new material. You need some sort of a fundamental breakthrough in the materials design, catalytic materials design, and this is possible. And if this is possible, uh, sustainably, then it solves a uh, major problem of the CO2 emission. All right, so this is our uh, scheme. And I now stop here. We also prepared the material to convert the waste plastic into, uh, uh, you know, uh, chemicals and fuels and also use this for CO2 conversion. And in another material where we use our silica, created the defects and we use those defects to activate the CO2 uh, you know, dissociates the hydrogen and get the methane again without any metals, so metal free ligand free catalysts. Uh, with that, I like to conclude. So, I showed you the dendritic fibrous nanosilica, then I showed you uh, uh, lithium silicate synthesis using uh, at high temperature. Then, I also tried to touch upon the uh, uh, use of defects. I also showed you a synthesis of black gold uh, using solution phase technique and then allowed that allowed see, tuning up the uh, distances between the gold particle causing the plasmonic coupling making the gold black uh, which absorb entire visible to near air light and one can use that to generate the heat at the localized surface or the hot electrons both of which can be used to carry out co2 reduction and then also the concept of solid acid which allows you to uh, degrade the plastic waste into useful chemicals at a lower temperature Okay, with that, I'd like to thank my group, uh, Sushma Rao, uh, Ayan Mati, Rajesh Belgamba, Saidip Singh, Sushma Kundu, and Rishi Verma, uh, who did this work. And I'd like to thank the Department of Atomic Energy for majority of the funding, and then the additional funding by Indo-French Sepipra, Share Industry, DSTDBT Mission Innovation, BASF, and Hindustan Petroleum. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to me, and I'm more than happy to answer some questions if you have.
Any questions? Thank you, sir, for letting us know regarding emerging field nanochemistry for sustainable development. I am sure that this will really boost our knowledge. Thank you once again, sir. It's my honor to draw your attention towards our chairman, Dr. Gayatri Barbade, and co chairperson, Dr. Ajit Bhunkar, for further session. Dr. Gayatri Barbade, she is associate professor at Institute of Science, Mumbai, member of Syllabus Committee of Mumbai University for MSc Part 2. She is also secretary of Golden Jubilee Trust Fund of Institute of Science, Mumbai. She has 34 national and international publications has attended various workshops and conferences. Two students had successfully completed PhD under her guidance and five students are currently doing research. Her core research area is nanoscience, pharmaceuticals, coordination chemistry, surfactants, chromatography. Co-chairperson Dr. Ajit Bhumkar, sir, has qualified NET. He is currently assistant professor at BPM's BN Bandotkar College of Science, Thane. He has several publications, his core research area is thermodynamics, transport, and ultrasonic properties of organic liquid. Now, I would like to request our chairperson to take over this session. Yeah, thank you, Seema. I'm passionate to work with people to find smart solutions to improve business and research excellence. These are the words which exp explains the personality Dr. Amit Zorgais. Sir, thank you very much for, for joining us from uh, Netherlands. If I'm not wrong, I have, it is, I can, could not pronounce the city name. Uh, Dr. Amit Zorgais did his post graduation in organic chemistry from University of Pune. Later, he went to for his PhD in enantio selective diastereomeric salt crystallization based on optical resolution of selected mandelic acid derivatives using supercritical carbon dioxide. Uh, he had an, a prestigious uh, ITN early stage Marie Curie fe uh, fellowship for pursuing his doctoral degree. Uh, now, during his doctoral research period, he has many accomplishments to his credits, like several publications forming alliance with industrial partners, coordinating with five EU universities, and so on. Before going for PhD, he was working as a project fellow in National Chemical Laboratory, Pune, where he handled several DST-sponsored research projects. Currently, he is with uh, Spice King Holland, Netherlands, as R&D manager. Uh, almost he's working there for the last 10 years. So we are very honored to have you with us and uh, for joining us from Netherlands. Over to you, Amit, sir. Very good morning, everyone. Thanks for me inviting uh, to deliver today's um, you know, a talk about the sustainable solvent system. I hope I'm audible to everyone to go through my presentation. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. So very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So it's uh, my favorite topic, supercritical CO2 technology. So today I am taking you another 30 minutes to talk about the green solvent supercritical CO2 technology for sustainable chemistry. And uh, to understand this topic by heart briefly, I would like to share the likes on the case study of uh, inertial separation of diastromic salts. So in today's world now, everyone is aware about the importance of uh, inertial pure chemicals because uh, the racemic compounds, one or other form is useful and the other one is uh, harmful and to understand uh, the useful forms, its impacts, it is very necessary to get only one form which is uh, active and essential to avoid the side effects. And therefore, this technology comes into the pictures. Al al already the chemical sector, entire chemical segments over the world use using 
several lactons of the organic solvents. And these chemical solvents uh, pose a serious environmental hazards in the form of climate change, pollutions, and in so many ways. So there is always a discussion what can be a possible solvent system to tackle these issues. And then sustainable chemistry is uh, leading by now the European Union uh, towards uh, zero carbon emission in industrial sector policy and this is very essential the big countries and manufacturing hub like india must focus on this type of technology where the biosolvents bio-based organic solvents uh, as well as water or supercritical co2 can be used as alternative solvent media to protect the environment as well as the humanity so let's begin with the topic um uh, i will have a short introduction about this technology followed by the what is the market size only in terms of the chiral and enantiopure chemicals and how this current solvent system can be replaced with the supercritical co2 and what will be the market overview of this then the supercritical co2 in bio extraction very light and quick and followed by a brief introduction about the how this sustainable solvent system is actually realized in practice by using gas and anti solvent technique. And thereby, I will try to convince you by giving a tuples there in brief study and then followed by uh, discuss the scientific result uh, and discussions about it. And I will hopefully conclude my topic in the next 25 minutes. It is solvent for sustainable chemistry, so it, it is not new for uh, all of you to understand the, the liquefied gases or ionic liquids or bio-based solvents or water. These are the possible solvent system can be termed as a green solvent. When we talk about the liquefied gases, those are sub or supercritical sol super supercritical fluids of carbon dioxide, butane, TMC. However, we, when we talk about the ionic liquids or deep eutectic solvents, then a uh, choline chloride carboxylic acids uh, are the good examples if we talk about the bio-based solvent as a green solvents which can be uh, possible but the growing food demands uh, also hamper its uh, in commercial scale but still uh, surplus production in food sector can be utilized to produce such kind of solvents from cereals oleochemistry sectors wood sectors and so on and more nevertheless the water the abundant can be used in fermentation in supercritical or subcritical in enzyme in hydrotype and surfactant and macration so so several other such applications are possible uh, these are the precise examples like if you talk about the sustainable solvents uh, from the tartus the limonine where the nagpur based uh, citrus production industry if uh, uh, successfully tap to produce this kind of solvent system for a local industrial hub that could be a good uh, uh, example or practical practical example uh, alpha pinene that can be uh, produced from the wood sources uh, as the natural waste uh, from the forest as well as agro products can be a potential source uh parazamine then if you talk about the super if we talk about the supercritical co2 so carbon dioxide is abundant so this can be used bioethanol for the surplus production from the sugar cane or beet sugar can be tapped uh, into the industrial solvent system as all of you know that nowadays the uttar pradesh up and as well as second largest sugar production state maharashtra as a very uh, surplus production of these uh, sugars and that can be utilized to 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 get a bioethanol for transportation industry as well as chemical industry for uh, to use as a sustainable chemical solvents to protect the local diaspora environment and ecosystem so this way the thinking and the policy making has to be started at different agencies and nevertheless the local ecosystem must promote it and uh, I think the Bandarpur College is one of uh, is affiliated to one of the very prestigious and the old institute where if the policymaker can make this significant impact, the eco-friendly solvents like dimethyl carbonate or cyclophenyl methyl ether, kind of alcohols from the bio uh, bio resources as well as uh, synthetic processes as well as from natural fermentation processes, can also be a possible sustainable solvents. 
uh, of course the fat fatty acids and ionic liquids are also the substitutes and there are several processes with the uh, the best uh, methodologies with the maximum yield uh, is reported in the literature and now available the only instinct is to start and also such policy promoted by the uh, uh, also came or governmental uh, sector policy makers from the ministry to the implementation of industrial sector so this is the important gap has to be met to use these sustainable solvents for the commercial uh, uh, production and uh, manufacturing across asia india or worldwide in fact, India can act as also the exporter of the sustainable solvents to the uh, European market or US market, American market. Uh, so these are also the untapped opportunity for the solvent productions or those who are looking towards the entrepreneurship in chemical sector. Uh, well, coming back to the topic, uh, when I'm going when I'm going to elaborate more about supercritical technology, let's have a quick look. All of you know that's what is supercritical fluid. Supercritical fluid is nothing but the critical point beyond the three phases, that the solid phase, liquid phase, and gaseous phase. So the critical point for each gas uh, or uh, for is different. Uh, for example, for supercritical carbon dioxide, the supercritical fluid is formed above the critical point of 31 degrees Celsius temperature and 73 bar pressure, or rather you say 7.3 megapascal of pressure. Um, uh, supercritical, uh, this, uh, this is the, one of the examples that we use extensively. Uh, this, this is the spice oil extract, uh, supercritical CO2 extracts. These we extracted uh, from our third party vendor laboratory. And this extract uh, is encapsulated in, using um, uh, in air microfluidics and which has very extensive application in cosmetics and pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals for making various cosmetic formulations. And this is uh, the beauty of this technique of supercritical extraction in bio extraction. And uh, I can't stop to show you how it works, especially in uh, these encapsulated extracts uh, extracted using supercritical CO2 technology. Here you can see the nicely coated encapsulated uh, particle. Uh, those are around uh, 1800 to 2000 micrometer capsules, which is widely used for cosmetic formulations. Um, and uh, these are from the clove. The yellow is from the curcumin uh, turmeric. And this is from the cardamom. So these are very exciting uh, applications that we develop here at Spice King Holland. Uh, now, why why uh, enantial pure chemicals are very important, and what is the role of this uh, sustainable solvent supercritical CO two in this domain? Enantial pure chemical, as I mentioned, that the each form R and S is responsible for a specific inducing effect, and therefore the one is useful while the other form is harmful, and therefore the chirality uh, among the racemic chemicals became very important because it has a particular biological activity to, and the high purity of enantiomer is needed to avoid the side effects. Um, as I mentioned here, each enantiomer has its particular induce, inducing effect and therefore to minimize the side effects and improve the life expectancy, enantiopia chemicals is of utmost importance. And the current challenge is about a uh, enable solvent system for these processes. So here is the market uh, size for the chiral chemicals. Uh, currently, the market is dominated by 60 uh, billion USD. However, it is uh, estimated around 2030, it will reach almost 140 billion US dollar. So there is a drastic increase in the consumption of these chiral chemicals. And in, uh, in, in wise, as the production increases, it's need uh, this coherent solvent system and the supercritical CO2 or other sustainable solvents has a, a great opportunity to uh, tap this uh, uh, growing demand of market. And therefore, not this uh, data is only for chiral chemicals, but uh, in terms of uh, chemical production, 
in overall chemical sectors around the world, this is uh, these figures are uh, unimaginable, and uh, it's um, it's it's uh, indeed necessary uh, as the global warming is increases, carbon neutral economy is boosting. So countries like India should also think about to start with start using such kind of technology where sustainable solvents will be given the priority. Um, now uh, I would like to give, uh, before using this technology, I want to give you the scientific inputs and the operational uh, mechanism, how these things work at the laboratory scale and industrial scale. So before choosing any kind of chemical transformation, especially from racemic to nonsugar chemicals, it is indeed necessary to see uh, the solubility of such kind of uh, chemicals. So for uh, uh, our reactivity of these chemicals uh, with the sustainable solvents like supercritical CO2 or other types of solvent. So this kind of things can be well studied using high pressure view cells where this is uh, expandable view cells with the glass lid where you can observe what's going under pressure at particular temperature by naked eyes. So the known amount of the resolving agent, then the one form of the um, uh, one, one of the enantiomeric form from the diastromic salt, which is highly soluble in this supercritical phase, while another is less stable, which can, or more stable, one of them is get precipitated and stays in the reactor. And the, to have a maximal extraction and the reaction, this reactor is allowed to further continue for a few minutes up to hours, and then it is uh, the extraction is done using a methanol trap and the methanol uh, this extract of co2 is allowed to pass through methanol trap and then which is further you operated on your rota you operated to get the uh, co2 uh, supercritical co2 dissolved phase uh, through methanol trap the uh, further uh, two three fold volume of the reactor of the co2 is allowed to pass from the reactor for the maximal extraction so that the um, the CO2 phase soluble uh, enantiomer or these diastromic salts can be extracted as well as the impurity which is are uh, very soluble in the uh, uh, extract phase can also be removed this way. So either the interesting enantiomer either get precipitated and stay in the reactor or get it extracted. So this is uh, the beauty of this technique where the separation can occur at their maximal limit and thereby we can uh, enhance the purity of these enantiomers from the racemic mixture in the form of diastromic salt. So all of you know already a chemical, I'm uh, explaining this uh, since a minute, but uh, you know these are the non superimposable images, mirror images of each other, simply talking about the twins, uh, right-handed and left-handed and uh, 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 and it is at most necessary the R form and S form both are responsible for particular uh, uh, biological activity or inducing effect as I mentioned. Here is the data from the view cell that the uh, carbon dioxide to methanol which is used for dissolving the minimal amount of these uh, solvents, uh, minimum amount of the racemates with the resolving agent. So the solvent ratio is basically the mass ratio of carbon dioxide to methanol. And then you can study a different mass ratio for different uh, starting material at different temperature and different pressure. And thereby it's uh, possible to uh, get the cloud points at different temperature. And then you can see uh, correlate the data with the most plausible or correlated or close uh, points at different temperature. So in this case, if you use a lower temperature range and lower pressure range, it's almost uh, economical. So you, you can change, uh, tune this data at different temperatures and pressure, and then you can uh, choose the best optimal parameter for further transformation or optimization of the reactor. And this data I uh, to methanol and the 4 chloromandelic acid mixture. Uh, of course, the calculation also became the integral part of this and uh, how, how we calculated enantiomeric excess in this study was the, uh, area, uh, the area of um, 
a capillary electrophoresis uh, was done and the enantiomeric excess area of raffinate of uh, so raffinate that is uh, obtained as uh, the more stable salts uh, in this study we use a raffinate of r minus raffinate uh, area under s and there is a uh, addition uh, whereby the enantiomeric excess is calculated molar ratio is calculated by the molar mass of uh, re resolving agent divided by molar mass of racemate solvent ratio as i mentioned is the molar mass of uh, sorry mass of co2 divided by mass of methanol selectivity is uh, simply the multiplication product of yield and enantiomeric excess so for raffinate and for as well as for the um, extract you can calculate it separately so these are the basic um, uh, calculations we use for this study uh, now i would like to give an examples how the supercritical carbon dioxide as a sustainable solvent that we use uh, for this model study here i would like to uh, emphasize on resolution scheme of uh, methoxyphenylacetic acid simply term as mpa so this uh, MPA here, although you, uh, you we talk about the sustainable solvent uh, for the uh, reactivity purpose or the mixing purpose, we need a very minimal amount of these solvents. Indeed, it is always better uh, half to one liter instead of half to one liter. It is always uh, better to use a minimal amount only for the reactivity purpose of the reactants and further uh, chemical transformation occurs in supercritical or subcritical CO2 phase, which is the beauty of uh, using this sustainable solvent system. In this case, uh, if you use 1 is to 1 molar ratio or half molar ratio at 120 bar of CO2 pressure for one hour at 40 degrees Celsius, then we uh, then it is uh, these two possible results are possible: more stable salt of one of the enantiomer and less stable salt of another enantiomer. Uh, when you use a half molar ratio, then this technique gives only one more uh, stable salt predominantly either in the extract, uh, in the raffinate phase or in the extract phase. So this is how uh, the separation is achieved in gas antisolvent process and this is uh, the beauty of this technique. If we further go on the parametric study optimization of MPA and uh, effect of molar ratio, then here is the figure. If you try to use a different molar ratio, then the yield uh, and the enantiomeric excess is also affected. If you see at the lower, lower molar ratio, then there is also the lower yield and enantiomeric excess, but at the half molar ratio, you can see is the comparably higher uh, yield as well as enantiomeric excess. However, if the molar ratio is beyond, beyond half, then it is noted that this uh, trend is changing fast as the increase in um, molar ratio gives uh, the both salts or uh, the enantial separations become difficult and here are the uh, parametric conditions uh, used uh, and optimized uh, for this study uh, then the effect of temperature is also very important as it is a supercritical or subcritical phase. In supercritical phase, uh, the excess temperature leads to maximal extraction or, uh, of the uh, reactant as well as the impurity profile into the extract or vice versa. So therefore, monitoring a temperature became a vital part of these techniques. If we plot uh, the effect of temperature versus yield and enantiomeric excess, then <clears throat> this trend is uh, uh, is also clearly visible at um, <clears throat> most most of the time the enantiomeric excess remains stable with the highest reproducibility at 40 degrees celsius however the yield is uh, affected uh, at a greater extent because with the increase in temperature the extract extraction uh, became more prominent because uh, because of the dissolution limit, uh, the dissolvability or the density of the supercritical fluid increases, and that gives the maximal solubility for a maximal range. And therefore, it is a, a beauty of this technique where you can 
tune the density of the supercritical fluid which plays a very vital role in chemical transformation ph phasic uh, extraction uh, and this uh, tunability can be achieved by changing temperature and pressure conditions effect of pressure is also monitored from 80 uh, 80 bar to 200 bar and here you can see almost at 120 bar we got uh, this study a particular model compound give a maximal reproducibility and um, if you look at the yield is further decline as i mentioned previously with the, uh, the extraction became prominent and then the 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 uh, raffinate uh, which is uh, also get extracted in supercritical phase and which is not good for the effective uh, separation so therefore this pressure study uh, also very important to get the uh, possible or possible results however enantiomeric excess is also further decline as the contamination with the uh, supercritical fluid increases by extracting raffinate along with the extracts so therefore uh, optimizing a particular temperature and the pressure is uh, important in gas and solvent process especially thereby it's also using temperature pressure also signifies the energy consumption so definitely this is uh, also important point to take into consideration so it's uh, quite a diverse topic to get quickly so i also summarize this outcome for each compound uh, in a very brief way so resolution of alpha met alpha methoxyphenyl acetic acid with r cyclohexylethyl amine we did using this gas anti-solvent precipitation where carbon dioxide is anti-solvent we use the half uh, equivalent amount of resolving agent and the maximum selectivity while amount of resolving agent is uh, low as possible. As I mentioned, it's a half equivalent is used. Uh, temperature pressure conditions are maintained at 40 degrees Celsius and 12 megapascal, that is uh, 120 bar. And then the high crystallinity material is observed. And this process is, uh, is uh, obvious with the semi-continuous. So these are the references we reported uh, the research article about it and at the same time we uh, we use the beauty of this technique uh, tunable solvent system in subcritical co2 to grow a single crystal as fast as possible compared to conventional crystallization technique and i think this is uh, almost uh, this single crystal is developed within eight days so this is also the beauty of the subcritical co2 technology supercritical co2 technology where uh, you can uh, grow a single crystals not only the pure crystals but also the crystals of diastromic salt as quickly as possible and these are the crystal uh, for the alpha phenyl methoxyphenyl acetic acid that was not reported before we grow it successfully and report successfully and reported. The another uh, diastromic salt crystals of S cyclohexylethylamine and S alpha methoxyphenyl acetic acid is also grown with these crystal properties uh, with the monoclinic crystal pattern. Um, single crystal study, if we uh, want to see, uh, if you want to see by um, uh, visible impact here is the images how quickly these crystals are grown in, in the laboratory and then we I compare the XRD data of enantiopure SS uh, at atmospheric condition that is a conventional uh, technique which took more than two to three months or even six months to grow these crystals however with the supercritical CO2 with the clear phase separation with the highest uh, high, highest possible crystallinity and size. Uh, this also done with the another SR salt at atmospheric for uh, methoxyphenyl acetic acid under supercritical and the XRD patterns highlight the very clear phase separation with high crystallinity. So this is also the beauty of this gas anti-solvent precipitation in several application. It gives a very fine crystalline material uh, for several application. Uh, scanning electron microscopy also shows the um, very finest uh, patterns uh, for the <clears throat> for the uh, diastromic salt under diastromic salt under supercritical conditions. Here, the DSC study with the melting point behavior 
for each uh, super uh, MPA is reported um, around 69.3 degrees Celsius uh, and the uh, higher uh, clear and nice pattern even for the another enantiomers of the MPA is studied along with this diastromic salt and the um, diastromic salt is also giving a uh, very high uh, melting behavior uh, for the purity almost about 75 percent and as we go using a uh, same diastromic salt with further half molar equivalent treatment under supercritical uh, gas under solvent technique then uh, this pattern is changes as the purity increases the melting point is also getting uh, better and better profile uh, i think we announce further uh, repetition of this technique uh, from uh, for the enantiomeric uh, enantiomeric excess from 75 till uh, 97 uh, percent enantiomeric excess and simply every time the form products is again treated with half mo molar equivalent to achieve this um, uh, uh, purity well so when you have a lot of data with the uh, this kind of um, uh, eutectic melting point and uh, dsc data then we also uh, develop this phase diagram for the methoxyphenyl acetic acid uh, it's a racemic form it's a, so it's enantial pure uh, forms and also it's a diastromic salt and these uh, beautiful representations use uh, different melting behavior pattern at different temperature uh, temperatures and thereby this melting phase diagram can give uh, a very nice representations and the experimental uh, output so this second output as i mentioned that these uh, crystals are successfully grown and it's uh, uh, x-ray patterns are, are developed and um, and uh, <clears throat> this phase diagram is developed and this report is also available in uh, um, published form. Um, so now I want to switch to the next topic. Uh, I think uh, I'm running out of the time. So I have to run up the second compound we use. The similar study is conducted. So I will not uh, give much emphasis on it. The resolution of 4 chloro ma again the another chloro derivative of mandelic acid with the enantio pure um, resolving agent is treated and then again the similar parameter of solvent ratio pressure and then here you can see uh, the beautiful crystals forms uh, using this supercritical uh, co2 system and these are the close uh, electron microscope images and these are the XRD pattern then compared with the racemic form, then diastromic salt form with the enantiomer compounds and so on. And here I want to highlight this point that the, uh, the same salts when under a, uh, a repeated, uh, repeated uh, half equivalent uh, gas and solvent precipitation, earlier the same reactions end up with the 64 uh, enantiomeric excess when we repeat the same compound, uh, same product, again with the half excess is further uh, and then further to 91%. And all this beauty is to uh, green sustainable solvent. And this is how it's possible. And uh, this is how is the beauty of this technique in the repeat you. And these things can happen within few minutes to seconds. So this is also another uh, possibility uh, compared to um, advantage compared to other chiral techniques that uh, the repetitive uh, recrystallization process enhance the enantiomeric excess and you can end up with the highest purity material within few hours uh, in the same day uh, compared to doing a column or other uh, chiral resolutions for several hours. So these are the second uh, uh, enlightened here and i would like to acknowledge uh, indeed uh, the different um, supporters and the finance uh, for this study uh, from the european commission bma is the province over heisel is the uh, one of the state from netherlands who also support for our r d activities european commission marine reactions projects high pressure consortiums and of course uh, the spice king holland company research grants and so on research grants and so on so I am very happy to answer and thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, sir. Students.
any questions students sir thank you very much sir for your excellent talk and from manufacturing to the analysis of supercritical co2 as a green solvent um, let's move on to the paper presentation yeah thank you so much sir thank you thank you gayatri ma'am for introducing amit sir thank you amit sir for enlightening us on the green solvent supercritical co2 technology for sustainable chemistry so i hope and i'm sure your address has paved way to understand the te this technology thank you once again sir over to you kavya tybsc chemistry from vpm bn bandodkar college of science take this opportunity to introduce chairperson dr sushma ambadekar ma'am associate professor of institute of science she has published many more research papers and guided students along with her our co-chair dr rohini mandare as assistant professor of vpm's bn bandodkar college of science who has also published and contributed her work for research field are now conducting paper presentation session well albert einstein once said if we knew what it was we are doing it would not be called as research would it so it's an occasion like this we get opportunities to test our knowledge and understanding i welcome all respected resource persons and delegate to present their papers we would now start with the oral presentation session however due to paucity of time we would request the presenters to please limit their respective res respective presentation within 6 minutes a bell would be rung at the end of 5 minutes so that they can wind up all participants are requested to kindly take a note of it now i would request arun d butnar seema r saple vikas v vaidya to present their paper on identification and characterization of degradation products of osinivita misylate tablets of uplcq T tof and nmr spectroscopy evaluation and their in silico toxicity for degradation products and osimertha over to you presenters okay uh, thank you so much ma'am am i audible and visible yes sir yes okay yes sir thank yes, you sir. Uh, thank you yeah welcome to national conference on nasis and sustainable development april 2021 so uh, for this uh, research work uh, dr seema sapre guided me uh, from same college and dr uh, vikas vaidya he is my was my co, co guide from uh, royal college of arts science and commerce vira road so i am going to present the paper entitled identification and characterization of degradation products of osmotin mesalate tablets by uplc qtop and nmr spectroscopy further evaluation of their in silico toxicity for degradation products and and osmartinib introduction osmartinib uh, is a third degrade uh, generation inhibitor sir, uh, of the mutant arun sir please share your ppt is it visible now is it visible no no it's not visible no, no. no not it sir not visible. please uh, uh, do it present now yeah now it is visible okay yeah. okay 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 yeah thank okay, you okay sir so uh, to next slide uh, introduction osmertinib is a third generation inhibitor an inhibitor of mutant specific epidermal growth factor receptor tyrosine kinase 
which shows robust clinical activity, especially in the lung cancers. The present study addressed osmotonic drug stability under acid hydrolysis in accordance with ICS guidelines. Force degradation study plays an important role in the development of stability indicating methods. It offers the drug maker more insights into the manufacturing of formulations and packaging materials. If the additional degradant is detected during the product storage or stability, the therapeutic value of the product would be altered. The degradant impurities were isolated through semi prep HPLC and further lipolyzed it through lipolyzer. The degradants observed in stress study was for the sophisticated instrument MES, that is HRMS and NMR spectroscopy. This is the chemical structure of osmaltinib mesalate, which is a known lung cancer drug. Lung cancer drug, it is recently developed. Uh, we degraded this osmaltinib in the hydrolysis, uh, acid hydrolysis, that we crushed the tab, uh, tablet in powder form, added 20 ml methanol in that to dissolve that osmaltinib, and further added one, uh, one normal 10 ml hydrochloric acid for the reflux, reflux it for two hours, cooled and neutralized by 10 ml one normal SCA, NOH, and further injected on UPLC. Yes, then after injecting UPLC, we saw four degradation impurities, that is degradation product one, degradation product two, degradation product three, and degradation product four. This is the typical chromatogram of host degradation sample, which we degraded, and we observed four degradation, that is the asomatinib degradation product one, DP2, this is the principal peak, this is the DP3 and DP4. In the sample, we observed this impurity is 3%, DP2 14%, DP3 3%, 12%. The uh, annual peak purity is well within the, uh, as per ICS guideline, all the impurities are well resolved from the principal peak. So we can use this method for further use. This is the typical mass fragmentation pattern for all the impurities, which is done on the high resolution mass spectra, which is a recent advanced machine. All these are the fragmentation pattern of individual degradation products. And based on this degradation, uh, based on this mass spectral data, we concluded some uh, possible structures. This is the typical fragmentation pattern of the one I, I, uh, I depicted here, one study for degradation product four only because this is the more complicated structure. This is the dimer. And based on this, whatever I, we saw this mass spectra, based on the spectral data, we proposed this plausible fragmentation pattern. On this plausible fragmentation pattern, we deduced this DP4. This is the typical NMR spectra of all the degradation, which we isolated uh, from prep HVLC and further lipolyzed on uh, lipolyzer. After the solid material, we Develop, uh, we generated this NMR data and based on this mass and NMR, these structures. This is the degradation product one, this is degradation product two, degradation product three, and this one is degradation product four. This is our principal osmaltinib. Yeah, this, is, this one is the hydroxyl impurity. This double bond get converted to this hydroxyl. Here, due to this HCl, this double bond get converted to this chloride. Here is a truncation of this peptide, that's amide bond, and from the test acrylic acid impurity, and this one is the dimer of this uh, osmaltinib. Now further, after isolation and after structural elucidation, we performed the genotoxicity assessment for the degradation products. The in silico genotoxicity study evaluation of the degradation products or process impurities for the pharmaceuticals is of utmost importance. Based on the molecular structure and reactivity, the structure activity relationship Data can be predicted from the endpoints. Direct, LASA limited, and MCAS, these are the softwares we generally, or industry generally used for the prediction of in silico toxicity study, toxicity assessment for the known or unknown compounds. Here in DP2, that is degradation product 2 and degradation product 3, observed positive for genotoxicity. DP1 and twin MKS, as per the regulatory expectation, two softwares should be used to identify the genotoxicity. By the co <coughs> correlation of these two software, only DP3 is observed as genotoxicity positive due to this haloalkane group that is chloride. And this, when we run on the software, this compound, this functional group forms uh, genotoxic positive. Application of this study, it provides insights to drug manufacturer to develop synthesis 
method for control of these impurities in drug substances or drug product provides insights to generic drug manufacturer to control these impurities in the finished formulation which helps to improve therapeutic value provides further insights for identification of possible degradation of metabolites it helps formulation manufacturer for the development of packaging components like uh, cartons labels primary packaging etc it helps to establish the expiry of finished formulation which helps to get quality of the product to the patient so now, these are the references we use for yeah i acknowledge okay thank you thank you so much uh, for giving an opportunity if any questions you can ask yes uh, arun sir uh, how you degraded yes. your product yeah we degraded our product in the acid hydrolysis generally when we uh, we take any tablet we, it goes in the stomach okay. and stomach has acidic but, uh, okay. but in a uh, forceful degradation Uh, that base hydrolysis is that heat and uh, humidity, sunlight, pressure, and uh, over the duration. Uh, your concern is with expiry date, na? So we have to consider that humidity effect, then sunlight effect, yes. pressure yeah. effect, why and humidity. Yes. Why, President? Why? Why we we only depicted this acid hydrolysis because there is already research published on the other stress conditions that is based uh, humidity and uh, uh, photolytic degradations. However, in acid, there was no research published on this molecule. That's why we published this uh, article, uh, present uh, paper here. Okay. So yes, uh, but we have to we need to consider all the conditions to establish the expiry date of the product. That is humidity, photolysis, temperature, and your acid and uh, base conditions. And what about your LOD and LOQ of your detection? Yes, we established the LOD and LOQ as per the ICS guidelines. We established the LOQ of 0.1 ppm for that all the impurities. So everywhere you got 0.1 ppm LOQ. No, some impurities we got 0.12, 0.13 because there it is again based on the response factor. It it will changes. And what about LOQ? Yeah, actually LOQ is below that. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, actually I I talk I talk about LOQ only. Not LOD. So LOQ is around 0.1, and LOD is uh, 0.05, 0.04, three like that. We got that LOD. Okay. Next. Okay, Gayatri, ma'am, you want to ask something? No, no, nothing, nothing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, uh, uh, college, for giving an opportunity to present my paper. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would uh, request Bhushan B. Popatkar, Shraddha A. Gotukade, Gangadhar A. Meshram, uh, for presenting water mediated system and catalyzed green protocol for the synthesis of five substituted one H tetrazole derivatives. भूषण भी पोपट कर ओवर टू यू सर ओवर टू यू सर Can we proceed next, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Now I would call Harsha A. Padwal, Vinod S. Narayane for presenting their paper on lipid peroxidation studies and antioxidant activity of glutathione reductase in crucian carb exposed to heavy metal toxicity. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Shall I start? Yes, sure. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. 
so good afternoon to uh, all uh, good afternoon to one and all my topic for the day is uh, lipid peroxidation studies and integrated uh, activity of detox reductase in crucian carb exposed to metal the quali uh, the quality of uh, the environment is deteriorating because of the accumulation of the several pollutants sir so put your slides on presentation mode it is on presentation mode sir instead of vertical make it horizontal yes ma'am yes. okay harsha proceed where why is that So is it visible now? Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Better now. Okay. Thank you, sir. So uh, the heavy metal pollution is one among the harmful uh, pollutions which uh, deteriorates not only the soft tissue but also the uh, hard tissue of the body because of the bioaccumulation uh, as it undergoes bioaccumulation through the uh, now it enters uh, through the food chain at several. Uh, several uh, effects within the lower animal several uh, several uh, effects within the lower animal fish in comparison with the other aquatic invertebrates as well as vertebrates are more susceptible to this heavy uh, heavy uh, metal toxicity as not only they live in water but also they are the tertiary consumers in the aquatic food chain heavy metals are produced uh, through lot of uh, uh, through variety of natural and anthropogenic activities are known to persuade the oxidative stress uh, in animals and ultimately in the humans as well ultimately in the humans as well lead and mercury both they are one of uh, the most common toxic uh, heavy metals lead is also included in the grey list uh, in the inter international conventions and Ideally, lead is not required by any organism. Hence, it it is one of the limited class of purely toxic elements. The last source of environmental contamination of lead is used uh, is, is is its use in paints, which contains um, lead, which is uh, uh, not under mandatory standards, and therefore there has to be uh, therefore there are issues in its disposable uh, procedures. the mercury and its compounds have been parts of the uh, prevalent pollutants of aquatic environment as per the records the main sources of mercury uh, getting released in the environments is through pesticides fungicides especially the aquarial uh, material compounds of mercury also methyl mercury is most chronically toxic of the mercury compound and recent uh, reports indicate that lead and mercury uh, as a pollutant causes various neurological reproductive immunological and other changes in the animals oxidative uh, oxidative as i already said that heavy metals cause uh, this oxidative stress uh, stress in organism and they induce or they mediate the um, uh, they mediate the free radicals or the reactive oxygen species this uh, ros or the reactive oxygen spe uh, species uh the, the studies have shown that this excess of this reactive oxygen species substances will uh, ultimately lead to cell injury uh, such as uh, uh, such as damage to dna proteins and lipid membranes ros damage has been implicated within the development of many physiological problems like aging asthma uh, arthritis various cardiovascular disorders and how to uh, how will come to know that uh, ros uh, there are free radicals present it is because of certain release uh, a certain increased level of the antioxidant now glutathione is a key in the makeup of glutamic acid cysteine and glycine 
and it helps uh, to protect the cell from the radi this radical damage which uh, and therefore act as an antioxidant within the cell this glutathlon uh, which exists in the gsh form uh, uh, which is in the re reduced form are oxidized from the gssg state in, therefore in healthy cells and tissues more than 90% of the total glutathlon po uh, pool is in reduced form that is in gsh form while less than 10% exists in the disulfide form as gssg is converted to gsh thereby helping cell uh, uh, from the oxidative damage which is caused because of the oxidative stress in addition to that uh, in addition to its role in oxidative stress glutathione also helps it also helps in maintaining exogenous uh, antioxidants now these all are uh, glutathione and catalase all these are endogenous um, as antioxidants while glutathione also helps in maintaining the exogenous uh, antioxidant like vitamin c and e it is also involved with the breakdown of perox uh, peroxides it has a task in regulating the aqua 40 cycles as well so glutathione has the ability to, uh, not only to uh, bind directly to many inorganic and organic xenobiotics but also play a major role in, um, um, in it also plays a major role in working on the carcinogenic compounds such as heavy metals uh, that of mercury and arsenic in the said in this study we have seen uh, the levels of we have uh, uh, we have introduced the um, lead toxicity, lead and mercury to uh, toxicity, and we have seen the levels increasing, uh, the elevating levels in the uh, adult carb, that is goldfish. Here we have taken uh, adult, adult carb was taken uh, irrespective of their uh, gender were selected for the exposure. The fish were exposed to the pollutants for duration of seven, uh, seven and twenty, uh, seven and twenty-one days. Later, the, uh, the control set, uh, sets were uh, maintained separately. There were three groups. First was... Show your uh, results, Prasha. Okay. No, okay. So, here, the lipid peroxidations in the liver tissue were expressed as NDA in the form of that is uh, melon DI. In the form of TB, uh, TBARS, that is a nanomole per uh, milligram protein, it was reported that the rate of that uh, it is clearly seen. Uh, it was reported that the rate of the lipid peroxidation showed insignificant rise in the seven uh, in the seven day uh, in the seven days treatment group over their control counterparts, and there was significant rise in the rate of lipid peroxidation, which was observed in the 21, 21st day or 21 days uh, of the group treatment. Recovery group was maintained where we see that there is a significant recovery, uh, uh, significant re uh, recovery, uh, uh, recovery group. So the comparative uh, results of both uh, 7 and 21 days. Another set that was a mercury antioxidant, uh, the levels of the lipid peroxidation uh, for uh, mercury uh, after the mercury treatment, the levels of the uh, reduced glutathione were uh, found to be non significantly low in seven years. Your time is over. Then, what is your conclusive remark? Okay. Just hold on that second, ma'am. So we can conclude that um, the present investigation clearly uh, it concludes uh, that the lead and mercury are capable of causing lipid peroxidation and generation of activity of GR is reported in this investigation. It's clearly uh, clear, uh, clear evidence of generation of free radicals due to lipid peroxidation. Thank you, ma'am. Have you determined the concentration at which they are acting lead and Ag? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, phone has got I can't hear you. Oh. ma'am. Uh, phone is not working. Yes, ma'am. Next. Thank you, ma'am.
Now next I will call Hushan B. Popatkar, Shraddha A. Guttukade, Gangadhar A. Meshram to present the paper on Water Mediated Cystin Catalyzed Green Protocol for Synthesis of 5 Substituted Vanished Tetrazole Derivatives. Yeah, good morning to one and all. Am I audible? Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry for the interruption because uh, previously I was not unable to connect it with the mic. So I apologize, apologize for the same. And uh, uh, after saying good afternoon to all, I'm starting with the uh, some little bit piece of work that I have done on the heterocyclic chemistry where uh, I have synthesized some heterocyclic compound that is one is tetrazole. My uh, presentation is water mediated cysteine catalyzed uh, green protocol for the synthesis of five substituted one is tetrazole derivative and uh, let us start with the introduction first. Uh, this is a introduction about the tetrazole it is a kind of heterocyclic compound which contain carbon atom and four nitrogen atom in a uh, five membered ring. This tetrazole basically a kind of skeleton where uh, people use this in uh, agriculture, biochemistry, medicine, pharmacology. No. Share screen option choose karana. Share screen kelelan. Share screen is there. Screen is there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, screen is visible. So this tetrazole derivatives or this scaffold basically used in the biochemistry, medicines, pharmacology, some explosive compounds, they are actually having the skeleton of tetrazole. Uh, there are numerous methodologies for the synthesis of this tetrazole derivatives which are available in the literature. Uh, but the problem is that many of the methods, they are suffer from one or other, another way, like some reaction, they use some expensive catalyst, some reactions, they use transition metal elements, some reactions, they use strong catalytic condition, like long reaction time, less yield of, yield of the product, difficult workup, and uh, some kind of what, uh, like conditions, these are very much how, uh, uh, strong. So that's the reason we thought that why we could not synthesize this tetrazole uh, by doing some mild reaction condition by applying some green protocol and here uh, our attempt was to synthesize this method which is more efficient economically viable and some kind of environmental more green compared to the later, uh, 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 earlier uh, reported methods and uh, we have successful to synthesize this particular tetrazole um, by using some uh, uh, amino acid as a cysteine as an amino acid where that is used as a catalyst and this particular reaction that we have done at room temperature. So this is the previous work I just wanted to uh, uh, show you now because uh, I have just now told you that many of the people this have synthesized this tetrazole by using this uh, benzonitrile, sodium azide and tetrazole has been synthesized but for the first case here you can see they have synthesized uh, like uh, tetrazole but with the condition is platinum nanoparticle so whole reaction is expensive similarly titanium chloride is transition metal elements uh, uh, and therefore this look like so called environmentally uh, problem creating reaction similarly copper acetate this also a transition metal element where you can have the addition of some uh, metal into the environment here ionic liquid supported copper catalyst again in dmf microwave condition these have successfully synthesized this tetrazole similarly alum nanoparticle and all this thing, uh, looking to the previous work what we can see that they have either used uh, expensive catalyst or the transition metal elements which, which makes a uh, little bit uh, difficult or you can say simply the more, more harmful or harsh reaction condition and here this work represents that we have only used 5 percent of the system as a catalyst in water medium at room temperature 30 minutes during at room temperature these are the starting material various aldehydes then sodium azide and hydroxylamine hydrochloride these three component reactions that we have done in one pot and the, it resulted into the tetrazole which is a uh, desired product now here a to k that compounds we have synthesized variety of compounds we have synthesized by uh, substituting with the aldehydes here uh, meta hydroxy benzaldehyde here ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde here you can have the uh, three four five like uh, tri substituted methoxy benzaldehyde bromo benzaldehyde chloro benzaldehyde four hydroxy benzaldehyde uh, dimethylamine like this substituted benzaldehyde heterocyclic benzaldehyde and dichloro and methoxy and hydroxy both the compound containing aldehyde these have successfully synthesized the compound in the given uh, methodology. Now let us uh, discuss about the spectra. When we look at the spectra of one or two compounds, what we realize that the compounds were synthesized successfully. Here you can find NH 
here uh, dc rate total you can find around 10 to 80 uh, sorry 11 ppm similarly this oh is used to like the broad which is going to get absorbed around 9 to 9.5 ppm and rest of the rd you can find aromatic uh, protons which are situated here this is dmsop and this is maybe because of the water as you can if it look like a aliphatic ch then the carbon must be there here itself but that carbon is not available here in 13c that's the reason we can say that this is the because of this peak is because of the water as we have done this complete reaction in water itself now let us talk about and find all these peaks are aromatic whereas uh, this one is highly shielded proton carbon atom because you can have oh which is donating increase in the electron density on this particular carbon you can have here at around uh, 112 ppm and according to that we can establish the structure was which was synthesized was in good agreement with given data similarly i have wanted to explain the same spectra of 13c and h1 for the this particular synthesized compound where you can find nine carbons here here some aromatic compound similarly you can find all the carbons which are going to get absorbed in given range here ch3 you can find this aliphatic peak in the range of 5 5 to 6 0 this ppm you can find 13c peaks similarly here irp also reveals that you can have aliphatic ch stretching here before 300 uh, cm inverse similarly aromatic ch is also there here uh, above 3100 and something or near to 3100 similarly 3500 find that peak is because of the uh, presence of oh which may be uh, uh, not present here itself but again i am telling you that because of the some pressures of water that may be comes around here similarly uh, 13c uh, mass spectrum of the same compound you can use that is molecular weight of the compound is 236 and here you can find we got m minus 1 peak at around 235 uh, m by 3 delta so in conclusion what i wanted to conclude that we have developed a environmental benign procedure for the synthesis of tetrazole similarly we have treated aromatic and heterocyclic aldehydes for the synthesis of desired product and overall uh, it represent a good convenient economic uh, green and environmental uh, benign efficient process for the synthesis of five substituted one h tetrazole derivative and these are the references uh, which says that the synthesis or the literature and you can go to this reference references and find out whether that people have uh, prepared this kind of uh, tetrazole by taking different conditions and all so uh, thank for thank i would like to uh, say thanks to all these uh, organizer for selecting this um, my uh, work for this oral presentation so if you are any, you are having any questions you may ask Okay. Sir, have you checked the percent recovery of your catalyst? Ah, uh, no, ma'am. As as we have only used uh, five uh, millimole percent of the catalyst, that is zero point zero six gram, madam. That is very very small index. Uh, small quantity we have uh, took for our. It is green technology. You should work on that, na? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, ma'am, that that is our future aspect too. We will try to recover the catalyst uh, in future, whatever ionic liquid or kind of different amino acids or some catalyst we are using over there. No, so recovery is very much important as you have said. Uh, but at the same time, um, we are not focused much more over on the uh, recovery of the catalyst. Hello. Yes. Can I ask? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bhushan. popotkar very nice yeah. presentation there is no code or synthesized and right. all these derivatives you have justified with the help of proton nmr spectra c13 nmr spectra mass as well as ir really you have explore all these derivatives so nicely i have you done hello your question only yes your done uh, any uh, pharmaceutical activity regarding this molecules Uh, sir actually these are the well known compound if you have uh, prepare many like uh, uh, big scaffold of the given skeleton then we can go for the uh, biological activity but yes uh, go for uh, biological activity because if they are with biological activity then your work will be more potent and will be helpful for others also okay right nice yes thank you so much for your kind comment thank you we we'll look forward for the same thank you next thank you sir now i would thank you sir now i would request nb kamle vs narayani for presenting lipid perox lipid peroxidation studies and oxidative stress induced by pyrethroid and organophosphate pesticides in fish over to you sir 
मैम इज माई स्क्रीन विजिबल यस यस तो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी डिस्कशन ऑन द लिपिड पर ऑक्सीडेशन स्टडी एंड ऑक्सीडेटिव स्ट्रेस इंड्यूस बाय द पाइरेटोइड एंड ऑर्गेनिक ऑक्साइड पेस्टिसाइड नाउ एज यू ऑल नो दैट द केमिकल सब्सटेंसेस सच एज पेस्टिसाइड्स हैव बीन आर बीन यूज्ड सिंस डेकेड्स फॉर ह्यूमन वेलफेयर दे आर नॉट ओनली यूज्ड इन एग्रीकल्चरल फील्ड्स बट दे आर आल्सो यूज्ड इन इंडस्ट्रियल हाउसहोल्ड एज वेल एज वेल एज कमर्शियल पर्पसेस Despite of the use and the merits of the uh, these pesticides, today people are basically focusing on people are more focusing on the ill effects that are caused due to the excessive and indiscriminate use of such chemicals. So, in order to study the effects of such chemicals on the non-targeted organisms that stay in this environment, we are for this study we are using two uh, chemicals, pesticides. That is, first is the chlorpyrifos, which is an organic phosphate. And it is a broad, effect, uh, broad, broad spectrum organophosphate insecticide. Uh, the next pesticide that we are using is a pyrethroid, which is a cyclometrin basically, and it is a synthetically prepared. Uh, it is a synthetically prepared pyrethroid, which is similar to the uh, pyrethroids that have been extracted from the chrysanthemum species. Okay. Then, uh, as we all know, that every living organism has its own system to protect the. Uh, Protect our body from the cellular damage that are caused because of the ROI, right? So the pesticides are known to cause uh, the increase in the uh, ROI, and because of the increased ROI, the cell damage is known to occur. Now, lipid peroxidation is an important biomarker. Uh, sorry, it is an important biomarker of oxidative stress, and thus we are focusing also the lipid peroxidation uh, lipid peroxidation status of the non-target or, uh, organism such as perishing corrosives due to these chemical pesticides. Such as organophosphate and pyrethroid. Now, what are the materials and methods that we have used? I think. Ah, now, what are the materials and methods? Uh, what we have done is for this experiment, we have collected the water 24 hours prior to use in a big tank, and then after that, we have. uh this is it in a low, in a smaller tank of 25 liter each and then we have grouped the animals into group control in group 2 we have seven new seven species of three set teeth which we have used as a psychometric treated uh for psychometric treatment we have used 0.02 pump hydrochloric acid later concentration of the pesticide right we have three set teeth and they these species were treated with the chlorpyrifos of 0.3 microliters per liter Then we have assessed the fish for the lipid peroxidation assay using the PDRS method. Ma'am, is the screen visible? Graph, graph screen visible? Hello. The screen is not visible. Is it visible now? Now yeah. this is the first graph showing the lipid peroxidation for the cyclometrin treatment. We have used the fish, we have treated the uh, fishes for seven, fourteen, and twenty-one days, and we can see that the lipid peroxidation, which is uh, seen in the form of MDA formula, the MDA that is the malonic MDA, that MDA, which is seen to be increasing with the exposure time. Control as compared to the control in seven, fourteen, and twenty-one days, as we can see that in the twenty-first day, the highest peak of MDA formation was seen. Similar results were seen in case of lipid peroxidation in the uh, chlorpyrifos treatment also. The highest peak was seen in the, on the twenty-first day of the exposure, as compared to the uh, control one. Now this is the comparative assay for both, that is the cyclometrin and chlorpyrifos. From this graph, you can see that the chlor uh, cyclometrin is more potent uh, to cause the MDA formation, that is the lipid peroxidation in case of the gills of the uh, 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 goldfish, that is the caracious corotus, compared to the chlorpyrifos. From this, we can conclude that the end product of the lipid peroxidation, that is the MDA formation, was seen uh, in case of both the pesticides on the 24th day at the maximum rate. as uh, as an increasing order sorry in an increasing order whereas the most uh, potent or the um, uh, the, uh, the most potent uh, uh, pesticide to cause the lipid peroxidation uh, in uh, 
what cypermethrin as compared to the chlorpyrifos again nice your slide is not visible ma'am ah oh, that's what i'm trying and this So in discussion, we can say that in the previous studies also we have uh, in, from the previous studies that we have used, we have got, got our results and according to the previous studies that the lipid power oxidation caused because of this pesticide uh, that is seen in, in, in according to the previous study and uh, the highest uh, uh, lipid power oxidation is seen in case of gills of the uh, caraceous or it is seen on the 21st day as compared to the control and thus we can conclude that cypermethrin is uh, known to cause more uh, lipid peroxidation than chlorpyrifos and our and our results are in accordance with the previous study thank you any question as yes. participant madam uh, what happened after 24 days have you extended sorry? your study no after 21 days we are not uh, proceeded further in uh, our future uh, endeavors are like we are uh, focusing we are trying to find out the uh, recovery also after 7 days what is the significance of 21 days you should extend no and then come back to your 21 after Why 21 you? after 21 days what we are seen is the fish becomes more lethargic the fish is uh, showing behavioral changes so we have uh, stopped the study till 21 days exposure itself and then we are trying to find out the recovery status of the fish after 7 days next yes thank you ma'am now next i would uh, request to nitin a sasne gangadhar a meshram to present the paper on one pot synthesis of two substituted for methyl thiazole 5 carboxylates from ethyl acetoacetate and thiourea by using ozone and iodobenzene over to you sir is not there can we go to the next ma'am yes i would now request ramchandra ji thorat anil v karnik to present the paper on development of new heterocycle based tweezers over to you sir yes yes Uh, is my screen visible to all yes sir hello everyone uh, myself ramchandra thorat and uh, topic of my today's presentation is development of new heterocycle based tweezers so before going in details of this let us talk about what actually tweezers are The term molecular tweezers was introduced by Whitlock, defining a molecular receptor characterized by two flat, generally aromatic, identical pincers separated by some or more less rigid tweezers. Some criteria were established to define a molecular tweezer, and these are the presence of spacer that prevents self-association, a spacer that establishes a distance of cavity seven angstrom between the pincer, plane to plane or centroid to centroid, suitable for the inclusion of the single aromatic gas molecule, and third one is a spacer that holds the pincer rigidity in a seen conformation. We just are characterized by open cavity capable of binding guests using various supramolecular interaction, including hydrogen bonding, metal coordination, hydrophobic forces, vulnerable forces, electrostatic effect, pi pi interaction. Hence, it could be used as a, in a molecular recognition and in asymmetric synthesis. So, the previous work which was uh, developed on this particular topic. So, in 2001, Yamato Research Group synthesized number of C2 chiral pyrrolidine tweezers, and one of them used as an organic catalyst. So an excellent enhancer selectivity for the asymmetric cycloaddition of anthrone and melamine. So this is the particular um, chiral molecule which is used as an organic catalyst for the uh, cycloaddition reaction, which give you 97% yield. 
so based on this in recent past our group has successfully synthesized lactic acid benzimidazole based various heterocyclic tweezers by attaching a chiral part of the heterocycle either pincers such as pyridine quinoline oxidizer and benzodiazole among these tweezers pyridine and benzodiazole contain benzimidazole tweezers found its utility as organic catalyst for the desorder reaction of androne and melamide with enhances selectivity up to 88% so these are the few heterocycle uh, chiral molecule which was prepared by our group and one of the uh, used as a organic catalyst for the same reaction and which give you 88% as a product so and this paper was published in tetra hydron in 2016 so present work uh, i have done in continuation of previous work we have reported synthesis of methyl mercaptobenzimidazole and phenacyl bro bromide derivative molecular tweezer so first synthesize uh, methyl benzimidazole by the treatment of mercaptobenzimidazole with a methyl tosylate in presence of base which will give you this product now the synthesis strategy for the chiral tweezer consists initially mercaptobenzimidazole converted to the methyl benzimidazole with further on alkylation with the phenacyl uh, bromide derivative and furnish uh, give you the this intermediate which having the phenacyl bromide as a substituent the final chiral tweezer obtained by simple reduction method the synthetic pathway for the preparation of chiral tweezers are shown below so this is the synthetic group and this is the uh, some study we have carried out for the, uh, whether our compound is chiral or not uh, by the polarimetry and uh, this uh, chart shows that uh, specific rotation is observed over here uh, which confirm that a chiral molecule is there Uh, we have confirmed our whatever we prepared by spectral data. So this is the uh, NMR of uh, H1 NMR of this particular compound, which shows that this particular peak, which is observed around 10.74, which confirms that uh, there is a proton is present. So NH proton is present over there. This is the aromatic region. This is the aliphatic region, and the proton which is associated with the sulfur molecule is uh, present over around 4.5. Which is further confirmed by C13, where you can have uh, this particular peak of uh, this particular carbon atom and uh, this particular peak for this particular carbon atom in a distilled region. So further uh, on substitution of this phenacyl bromide, uh, we can easily observe that the peak which was arrived uh, for NH around 10.49 is vanished and new peak is developed between this. So uh, you can easily have this OCH3. Peak around 3.8, and which is again further confirmed by C13 NMR by having a peak around 190 of this carbonyl functionality. Further IR study was carried out, and we confirmed that these are the peaks of uh, this particular uh, uh, region and carbonyl functionality. You will get around 1694, and this uh, uh, methyl peak is around uh, uh, 1367. And these are the bending peaks. I have further on a reduction product we got of OH, which is confirmed that one peak is uh, observed over around uh, 3200 centimeter, which confirmed that OH is present in the system and uh, reaction is carried out. So uh, these are the NMR spectra of uh, this particular uh, same compound, and uh, this is the C13 of uh, this. So the the chiral or tweezer derivative have been synthesized by simple and efficient synthetic route starting from the methyl 2 mercaptobenzimidazole all the compounds have been characterized by various spectral techniques such as ir nmr and polarimeter the synthesized chiral tweezer derivative will be useful for the further application in the chiral transformation and chiral molecular recognition process so i acknowledge my professor's guide ev kanu for guidance and constant support department of chemistry university of mumbai microenergy lab and I thank conference of organizing committee. Thank you very much. Any questions, participant? Okay, sir, how you separated your final product? Ah, uh, which one, ma'am? Final product. All your final product. Those are chiral in nature, no? How you okay. separated them? We are not separated, ma'am. It's a pure one. Hundred percent pure. Yes, yes. It's no reaction is hundred percent, sir. No, ma'am. It's around ninety, ninety-seven, ninety-eight percent. Ninety-eight percent E. Then yes. 
in mixture you analyze nmr and no, no, no. That, that that we have done simple by column by by column column which column you use for separation of chiral compound uh we have the system of pet uh, ether and 10 particle acid that is a solvent system not yes yes solvent. column yes which column which column material you used silica ma'am silica okay oh, yes. on silica you separated chiral moiety yes, okay next next participant thank, thank you sir now next i would like to request sandhya patil and dr leena sarkar to present their review on comparative study of various green synthesis synthetic method via hamset reaction uh kavra i think she is not there uh, since she is not feeling well she is uh, actually positive so uh, please proceed. okay ma'am yeah ma'am now next i would like to call saurabh shetty manoj gavri to present the paper on generation of nanostructure through self assembly of n benzoylated dipep dipeptide esters i would request thorat sir to please uh, stop the screen sharing thank you sir as he is not there saura are you there saura okay kavya can we proceed ma'am next yes ma'am next i would like to call shakuntala and mariappa anita s goswami giri ma'am to uh, present their paper on photo photochromism in spiroxines yes good afternoon uh, i think i uh, my screen is seen by everyone yes ma'am yeah thank you yeah good afternoon one and all i am shakuntala nm today i am presenting short review on photochromism in spiroxysin under the guidance of dr anita s goswami giri organic photochromic materials are having wide application in molecular devices like uh, optical memories molecular switches photochromic lenses oleds solar cells Examples of photochromic substances are azobenzenes, fulgides, diethylethenes, pyrooxazine derivatives. Among these, pyrooxazine derivatives are selected here to give a review on it because of the ability to give intense photocoloration. They have fast thermal relaxation and excellent fatigue uh, resistance. The photochromic uh, property uh, was coined by Hirschberg in 1950. uh it is nothing but a reversible transformation of a chemical species uh between the two forms by absorption of electromagnetic radiation so this is your the first form is your spiroxazine closed form ring structure which in the presence of electromagnetic radiation it can open up uh, to the merocyanin form and usually the merocyanin forms are colored in nature and the spiroxazine is colorless and the reverse uh, process can take place either by the photo Uh, electrical light uh, that is called as the p type of photochromic process or uh, by thermal induction then we call it as a t type of photochromic compounds now uh, we are studying about the photochromism the substituent on them so if we go and substitute some electron withdrawing groups or any other electron donating groups either on the indoline ring or a oxygen ring it can bring about uh, different types of properties enhancement so the rate of uh, thermal decoration can be reduced so which will be useful in the application of data storage like cds and dvds 
it can improve the fatigue resistance also so which is very important for the photochromic lenses like it depends on the number of cycles the spirooxazine and the merocyanin forms convert from one form to another there are also so this is the first example which is uh, showing the thermal uh, reduced rate of thermal decoloration and uh, the next one shows the improved fatigue resistance also the light sensitive contrast agent for mri so uh, balmen et al they investigated that merocyanin form of this uh, second uh, component that spirooxazin derivative having the methoxy group uh, on the oxazoline or the indoline ring showed a improved uh, photochemical responses so it could be used in the as a contrast agent in the mri for a diagnostic purpose and the third derivative which is seen uh, with the uh, n propanoic acid uh, it showed a very high resistance so it could be integrated into dye sensitized solar cell uh, but only thing the solar uh, conversion efficiency was found so the applications now these uh, co polymer of the uh, meth acrylate uh, spirooxazine uh, with the uh, pyrinyl methyl meth acrylate as can be used as a uh, fluoro sensor that is for the cyanide ion detection okay which is called as a chemos and this act by the quenching of the fluorescence because the moiety that is the merocyanin form actually forms a uh, complex with the cyanide ion the spirooxazine co polymer these are the two polymers which were used uh, for the co polymer uh, uh, spirooxazine with the fluoro uh, for that is your pyrinyl meth methacrylate so these two co polymer also showed a very good uh, uh, property for the data recording material that is these group uh, of scientists they worked on how it uh, can be used for uv writing and erasing experiment so it could be applied for the cds and dvds uh, material another property of spirooxazine uh, was uh, studied by the uh, group that is uh, this component which is uh, the structure having which could detect actually mercury uh, hg2 plus and uh, it had a very high sensitivity for the hg2 plus in the presence of other cations also quinn et al they studied uh, repairing a microchip taking the spirooxazine as a only sensor to detect multiple metal ions based on the fluorescent enhancement in the uv light in the uh, visible light and also in the dark radiation stimulation so uh, in three different wavelengths they could detect different types of metal ions in the presence of other smart fabrics can also be designed using this pyrooxazine derivative so ias et al applied mixed group mix uh, applied the mixture of silica nanoparticles and spirooxazine on the cotton fabric so it showed a very excellent uv blocking property and also it showed the antibacterial property but the synthesis of this uh, that is uh, spirooxazine uh, applying on the fiber could not be done it had a very limited uh, commercial application but later on abat et al they overcame this problem and they used this uh, supercritical carbon dioxide method for dyeing the fabric so using this sea green so that uh, it showed a very uniform dyeing and uh, could prepare a smart uh, fabric using this pyrooxazine this is just a representational uh, picture to show how the pyrooxazine has been developed on the uh, fiber pyrooxazine can be also linked to the polymers so they can be grafted on polymer like uh, pmma that is uh, polymethyl meth acrylate uh, using some fluorophore like tetraphenyl ethylene so that will show a photo switchable fluorescent property so it can be used for the biological image so this is the examples which have been studied the spiro uh, oxygen molecules when a uh, two components of uh, similar type or a different type can be combined they give rise to a biphotochromic system so uh, when we have a biphotochromic system two state but they will be showing now four states because of these two biophotochromic uh, components so that can be used as a enhanced molecular switcher or the uh, memory devices because of the four different states at different wavelengths yuan et al they worked on the 
type of derivatives that is uh, this is the second derivative that is the boric acid derivative which is having the pyrooxygen on the left hand side which is connected with boric acid and on the uh, right hand side you have the fulgite system so this acts as a biphotonomic system so it has a enhanced property that is showing uh, optical absorption and fluorescence emission so it can be used as a fluorescent imaging in biological molecules so these are the four different states you in the first slide i had showed only one uh, two states that is pyrooxygen uh, with the uh, light radiation it uh, opens up to merocyanin but here if you just observe because of biphotochromic uh, system we have four different states at different wavelengths uh, there are many biological application of these pyrooxygen derivatives uh, they can detect amino acid so work has been done uh, by the scientists where they could uh, complex the uh, spirooxygen naphtha spirooxygen with the metals okay like uh, fe plus 2 and uh, hg plus 2 and it could detect uh, 20 amino acids in the different uh, wavelength that is in the dark in the uv and visible irradiation conditions and this was possible because of the complex formation of these uh, Uh, naphtha spirooxygen metal with a amino acid due to the different uh, properties of the amino acid there and it showed a uh, different fluorescence fluorescence intensity for the different types of amino acid now these photochromic switch can also be used for biological imaging using this spiro uh, naphtha oxygen by fluorescent quenching using the uh, fluoropores so this is one of the example which has used as a uh, photochromic switch to for the biological imaging in living cells also so this is the example where the simple spirals uh, of the zine has been used where the metal it has been coordinated that is forming a complex with the merocyanin form and uh, then finally they are trying uh, they have used it to detect a different amino acid that is these 20 amino acids under different uh, uh, light radiation that is in the dark then in the visible light radiation and the uv radiation so under these different condition or wavelength they could detect these different amino acid having a different intensity for the fluorescence okay madam your time is over uh, okay ma'am hurry up wind up yeah. wind up yeah Uh, so pyrooxygen with this high fatigue resistance thermal stability complex formation metal ions with the metal ions and high photostability and all these properties they have a commercial application in different fields like biological sensor or molecular switches or uh, chemo sensors and we will be uh, working on these pyrooxygen molecules for the in our research work so these are the references uh, which i have referred uh, thank you I would like to thank Dr. Anita S. Goswami Giri for guidance and uh, B. N. Bandopal College and Institute of Science for giving me an opportunity to present this review. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, participants? Madam, you can try your material as a ion selective electrode membrane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. So you can fabricate. Yeah, thank it. you, ma'am, for your suggestion. Okay, you can fabricate that the uh, amino acid uh, detection. You can use that, no? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would call uh, Vijay D. Gangan Uttam Yadav to present the paper on synthesis and antibacterial activity of novel benzofuran derivatives. Yeah. Okay, come on, Gangan, start. Yeah, hello. Excuse me. Yes, audible. Yes. Yes. 
So you are not properly audible. Sir, we are getting. So you are not properly audible. Some problem with connectivity, I think. Uh, Kavya, just check. Uh, yeah, can I Next, you can. I would like to request Saurabh Shetty to present his paper on generation of nanostructures through self assembly of N benzoylated dipeptide esters. Give me a second. I will uh, share my. Okay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, yes, sir. My topic is uh, yeah, my topic is generation of nanostructures through self assembly of n benzoylated dipeptide esters. Now, nanotechnology is basically the uh, concerned with the science and engineering of small things, uh, especially those with hundred nanometers or less. And uh, one nanometer is just nothing but ten uh, uh, to minus nine meter, and nano stands for the Greek word. Which means uh, dwarfs. Now we have chosen peptides for uh, forming nanostructures. Peptides are nothing but they are just uh, formed uh, by connecting alpha amino acids uh, by the means of a peptide bond. And those having a low molecular weight, they are considered as peptides, whereas uh, less um, less than ten thousand dalton's. Uh, whereas those having a higher molecular weight, they are they are mostly considered to be proteins. And uh, peptides play a very highly uh, Important role in biology, uh, oxytocin, uh, which is a monopeptide, which acts as a chemical messenger in the brain, and uh, it also plays an important role during uh, childbirth and lactation. So that is why we have chosen peptides for making nanostructures. Now, what are the advantages of peptide-based uh, compounds? The peptide-based self-assembled compounds have they are, that they are biocompatible. They are very simple to synthesize, and they are chemically flexible. Uh, that is, they can be. Uh, decorated with a large number of functional entities they can be made more hydrophilic they can be made more hydrophobic and they also have a biological recognition ability and they are highly stable and have they have a robust structure so that is the advantage of uh, peptide based uh, self assembly now what is the principle behind nanostructure formation in peptides nanostructure formation in peptides takes place through the help of Uh, self assembly which is a process in which disordered smaller entities they form a organized structure by the means of uh, specific local interactions such as hydrogen bonding electrostatic interaction pi pi stacking interaction and hydrophobic interactions even though these uh, forces are collectively we uh, together they form a very uh, help in forming a very stable structure now our design was of simple n benzoylated dipeptide esters because the presence of a phenyl group as we have seen previously they help in stacking as well as the presence of this uh, amide linkages they help it will be helping in hydrogen bond formation and therefore we thought that we should be introducing more of phenyl ring and uh, amide linkages and therefore we thought of synthesizing n benzoylated dipeptides these molecules uh, small molecules were easy to synthesize they were obtained in uh, moderate to good yield That is about 60 to 80 percent yield, and they can be they could be purified readily by using the recrystallization procedure, and they easily self-assemble to give nanostructures. Now this was our uh, synthesis of n benzoylated dipeptide ester. This was the conventional Cotton Bowman conditions in which glycine was uh, reacted with benzoyl chloride, and n acylation took place to form n benzoyl glycine. Uh, and then uh, phenylalanine was uh, esterified. to give uh, phenylalanine ethyl ester hydrochloride by using thionyl chloride uh, which help in the formation of this acyl chloride and then conventionally after that reacting with alcohol and after the, these two were coupled by using hbtu uh, 
and uh, NMM as a coupling agent and DMF as a solvent so as to give these uh, dipeptides, simple dipeptides which were easily purified by recrystallization. And uh, this is the IR spectrum of N benzoyl, phenylalanine, and phenylalanine ethyl ester which we have synthesized. Uh, these two uh, are, of, are for the NH stretching ones. 3064 is for the uh, aromatic uh, CH stretching, and these are for the sp3 hybridized uh, the CH. And uh, 1736 is for the ester of the carbonyl group, and 1655 and uh, this 1655 is for the um, this amide one, and the 1631 is for the uh, ben benzamide one. And 1536 were for the aromatic uh, CH, uh, uh, I'm sorry, aromatic C double bond C. And uh, uh, 1235 is C single bond O. Uh, so these were the peaks of molecules form. And this is the NMR spectrum. Uh, this is the triplet of your uh, CH3 group. And the quartet, this is the quartet. Uh, then these two CH, they are represented here. These are the alpha CH of phenylalanine. These two CH2s, they are here, they can be they can be seen as a multiplet because they are di-stereo, uh, these hy two hydrogens are di-stereotropic because they are adjacent to the chiral center and therefore they were sealed as a multiplet. The aromatic hydrogens were seen here in this range and the NH2s, they were seen coupling to the CH, adjacent CH, as two doublets here for the two NH groups. Then this was the C13 uh, spectrum of uh, this compound. Uh, it, you, uh, it can be clearly seen that this compound, this is the C, and these two are the uh, CH2 groups of the phenylalanine, beta CH we call uh, These two are the alpha CH groups, that is these groups uh, of uh, phenylalanine. And uh, this one is the ester CH2, which is highly deshielded because it is attached to the this uh, ester alkoxy oxygen. Uh, these ones are the aromatic uh, carbons. and. Uh, this one is the benzamide uh, carbon, which is a slightly shielded one. This one, because of the donating effect of the phenyl ring, it is slightly shielded one. Whereas this one uh, is a deshielded one, the ester group. Uh, so this was the C30 spectra. So these are the SCM images uh, we have uh, done of this compound, and we have got beautiful uh, ribbon shaped structures. Uh, the only disadvantage is uh, they were not of very much uniform size, which we are trying to now focus on. We are trying to improve, make them of uniform size. Uh, this, uh, and again, these are the uh, uh, other SEM images of the other compound which we have synthesized. And we just uh, synthesized. And uh, summary, yeah, these compounds can be easily synthesized in, and they can be readily self-assembled. Pipe stacking again plays a very important role here. And uh, Potential applications of this, they can be used as a drug delivery available, which we are not yet focused, will be focusing on. Uh, they are reflected in uh, this uh, molding silicon nanowires, and they can be also used as biomodels for studying uh, diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. Now, uh, I would like to thank our principal, Dr. Pradhyam Prabhu. I would also like to uh, thank Professor M.M.B. Ramana sir uh, for his support, and I would like to uh, uh, thank the organizers of ACSSD 2021 for uh, allowing me to present here, and University of Mumbai for minor research and TIFR for SPF images. Uh, thank uh, yeah, these are the references and thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes, participant. Want to ask? Okay, sir. Saurabh, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you work on peptide. How you control that peptide chain? Uh, peptide chain, I have controlled by the means of protecting group. The benzyl itself acted as a protecting group, ma'am, here. And therefore, uh, we could restrict it. And uh, if we have uh, this esterified, this so can uh, the carbonyl group will be protected. So we have restricted it to dipeptide. Okay. So you are not eating that uh, uniform. Uh, that yes, 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 ma'am. We are trying for that. We have not got uniform uh, dimensions there, but we are uh, try, uh, trying to change, modify the condition. Maybe in our sample preparation, uh, we'll modify that. Okay. Next, Kavya. Next, I would call upon Vijay D. Gagan, Uttam Yadav, to present a paper on synthesis and act antibacterial activity of novel benzofuran derivatives. Can you share my screen, madam? Actually, I am not getting my slides. I already sent my slides. I have sent my slides, but uh, not. Can you connect? Hello? 
then you take your time uh, let's take uh, participant uh, number uh, sir can you uh, share to me so that i can uh, present from this side gangan sir yeah 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 can you share my slides madam uh, sir where you stand on the mail on on the mail uh, yeah uh, so roini madam you have to do that please take yeah yeah please. okay ma'am okay meanwhile we will have our last participant presentation yes yes Next, I will call upon Vinda Mazramkar, ma'am, to uh, present the paper on bio remediation solution to remove pollution. Yes, ma'am. मिंदा मैडम यस मैडम हाउ यू देयर मिंदा मैडम हाउ इज दिस मैम मिंदा मैडम ओके 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 देन गंगन सर yeah yeah i'm ready but actually can you i guess i'm not able to share from here but can i have to send yesterday slides to uh, andena sir sandhya patil is also remaining na kavya yes but uh, she is not there in the okay gosa ma'am you got slide uh, uh, roini ma'am ma'am just got the slide Yeah, is my screen visible? I have shared. No, 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 no. Maya. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, thank you, sir. Sir, so please yes. tell me uh, for next slide. Yeah, synthesis. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Synthesis is my top, my topic for my tutorial presentation is synthesis and antimicrobial activity of novel benzophenone derivatives. Next slide, please. Next slide is. Yeah, heterocy heterocyclic synthesis has emerged as powerful technique for generating new molecules useful for drug discovery. Heterocyclic compounds provide scaffolds on which pharmacophores can arrange yield potent and selective drugs. Example, paclitaxel, then vincristin, vincristin. Benzophenone is a fundamental unit in numerous bioactive heterocycles. They have attracted chemists and medical researchers worldwide due to their potent biological activity, which includes anti-cancer, anti-tubercular, anti-diabetic, anti-Alzheimer, and anti-inflammatory properties. The benzophenone nucleus is present in large number of bioactive natural and synthetic compounds. Benzophenone derivatives have potent application in pharmaceutical, agricultural, and polymer chemistry. because of the potent usefulness of benzophenone nucleus and in continuation to our earlier work next slide please next slide yeah. 
in continuation with earlier work, we try to make a laboratory of these compounds, for these permutations and combination to come up with a potent molecule of benzofuran, whereas benzofuran nucleus can be etherified, esterified, and hybridized with the other biological molecules to attain such biological activity. The object of this study is to contain two molecules of the same disease domain to produce more potent candidate in the same disease domain or to contain two molecules of the different disease domain to produce, have a mixed variety of those disease domain or to have a candidate with entirely different biological activity. This is the postulate we have done before. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, these are the earlier references. My earlier papers. Now this is the work where isoeugenol is subjected to oxidative coupling using iodobenzene diastate. In this case, iodine is in plus three oxidation state. In iodobenzene diastate, iodobenzene is in the plus three oxidation state, which is unstable. So in this case, it will take two. It goes to the plus one oxidation state. So from plus three to plus one, it gets reduced and the compound gets oxidized. Iodobenzene diastate gets reduced. This is the mechanism. Next slide, please. Iodobenzene diastate gets reduced and isoregional gets oxidized. It is a similar to Desmartin peroxidase oxidation, which you are teaching to MSc students. Now, this is the isoregional undergo oxidative coupling using iodobenzene diacetate to give this peroxide and then reacts with the another molecule of isoregional that is oxidative, di oxidative dimerization using dihydrodiazoeugenol. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, we have diversified this molecule to previous, previous side, please, previous side. So using potassium carbonate acetone, this is a normal uh, reagent for alkylation. In this case, OH gets get protected by using different alkylating agents. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. reactive and it eliminates KBR. So it's a, because of the inductive effect. So these are the, this is the normal mechanism for the formation of these alkyl compounds. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, madam. Next slide, please. Next slide. Rohini, madam, are you there? Yes, ma'am. It is on next. Uh, okay, okay. I, Come yes. to directly. Okay. And then these compounds, all these, all these compounds are tested for their potent antibiotic activity. And antimicrobial is a substance that kills or inhibits the growth of microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, or microprotozoans. Antibiotic drugs either kill microbes or prevent the growth of microbes. In this method, that is called dish plate method, in this method, the test organism is slid in an agar plate. And the test organisms are sticked across to test the inhibition of growth as a marker of antibiotic microbial activity. In-depth analysis of this compound through structure activity relationship will provide further insight and can be an interesting topic of future studies. So these are the things. Next next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes, sir. I am on references slide. Yeah. These are the references slide. Compound which are um, having anti potent anti antibacterial activity. We have done is qualitatively at 100 micro microgram per ml. Next slide, please. These are the references which we have used for carrying out the synthesis. All these compounds were were checked were, were found to be new compound and were confirmed by SciFinder search. We have done after first we have done the SciFinder research and we have we find that, that these compounds are found to be new. So this is the present conclusion is that the, the this all these compounds are new and we are tested for their antibacterial activity. Last last slide please. Last slide. Okay, I'm on last slide only. Yeah, thank you. Any question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Have you checked atom economy of your reaction? But uh, the the, uh, the yield of these compounds is around seventy to eighty percent. The yield of these compounds seventy to eighty percent because actually this is a, uh, in this uh, iodobenzene diacetate is a hypervalent oxidant. Hypervalent ox iodine is in the hypervalent state plus three oxidation state. We will get reduced and the uh, compound gets oxidized. This is the idea for this oxidative coupling. Yes, this is, this is what. Oxidative coupling. If you see this proton, this will proton with this proton will resonate at 5.1.
because it's a benzylic okay. proton as okay. a okay. one plus one. Okay. This will this. Okay. This that... will give multiplet at five point one one. This will give as a multiplet one plus three and one plus two, and this will give as a double. Okay. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Got it. Yeah. Now in uh, antibacterial uh, testing, which standard yeah. you use? Uh, uh, we are use uh, this ampicillin. Actually, I have not mentioned there ampicillin. We have use okay. ampicillin. So, what is status of your compound compared with ampicillin? It, it is compared to ampicillin. It is not high, that much potent, but yes, they are showing reasonable biological activity. That's why we are first of all the idea is to prepare new compound. That is one first. That is what we are confirmed by sci-fi research. Secondly, the antibacterial property. That is we we have done by beach plate method. Few of the compounds I have mentioned there. Number of those I have mentioned showing reasonable biological activity. They are they are not more more potent than the standard, but they are compared. Yes, you can see here one, three, seven, and eight. If you can go to the chemical data, and this is done qualitatively at hundred mic microgram per ml. Okay, okay. got it. Okay. Yeah. Now we will do for uh, dose dependent. If something because first of the compounds are new. That is first part. So that is for our publication. Compounds are new and showing some reasonable activity. So that is the reason. Okay. See, this is a oxidative compound. Okay. This is a compound for benzofuran nucleus. If you see, benzofuran nucleus is found to be present in number of drugs. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Gangan sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Anybody else? Avinda has joined. Or oral presentation over. Yes, Kamya. Ma'am, Avinda, ma'am, uh, is remaining. Avinda, ma'am, she is there. Avinda, ma'am, are you there? Okay. She is. If she is not there, then we will stop here. Okay. Yes. Yes, madam. Yes. Okay. So. So. It was very Thank absorbing you, day. Very all informative lectures and nice presentations by uh, researchers. I congratulate all of you. Thank you. I think out of eleven oral presentation, nine were there, right? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, Patil and Linda, ma'am, up there. So all presentation were very nice, and yes. I also congratulate all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much to all the present presenters who presented today. It was such an informational session, which had a uh, diverse topics. Okay, so today's uh, session was over. the session Thank was. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Continue. Yeah, sir. The session was chaired by dynamic personality, Dr. Sushma Ambadekar. Associate Professor in Chemistry from Institute of Science, Homi Baba State University. Her area of special specialization is in pharmaceutical science, waste management, and separation technology. Madam has visited several countries and published more than thirty-five research papers in peer-reviewed journals. She also guided two PhD students and four MSc by research students and five PhD working under her. supervision thank you so much madam for enthusiastically chairing session and made all for for closing so, uh, session over to you aprajita thank you kavya for paper oh, yeah. presentation i would request dr gayatri barabde ma'am for the first take concluding remark please ma'am Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's just wind up within uh, two minutes. Today we started uh, a con national conference on advances in chemical sciences and sustainable development. Uh, this is just a wind up. Uh, we started with Dr. Amba Varekar, Vice Principal, Bandorkar College. As a convener, he welcomed the participants and guests. He gave the 
in sight of the Bandorkar College, and uh, he stressed about the importance of conducting conference is to make students aware about the research, recent research going around the globe. Uh, our director, Dr. Jairam Khobragade, he couldn't attend the program because of his prior commitments, but he gave his uh, congratulations to everyone and uh, he informed us about the glorious past of Institute of Science. He wished everyone all the best for the conference. Uh, Moses Collett, Principal, VPM Bandorkar College, as the convener in chief and chair of the conference, he informed about the history of Bandorkar College. Bandorkar College has won several awards and uh, it has been awarded autonomy by UGC this year. He congratulated the team for smooth conduct of conference. Uh, VB Bedekar, sir, he couldn't join us, but uh, Nitin Gurvi, sir, he showed the proceedings of the conference. Uh, Anita Goswami, ma'am, she gave the opening remark of the conference. She welcomed all the participants, explained the purpose of conducting conference along with two preparatory workshops. Also, she briefed everyone about the two preparatory workshop held earlier. She is the co-convener of this conference. Uh, our thanks to Dr. Anthony Melvin Cresto. Uh, as a chief guest of this conference, he inaugurated virtually the conference. And his inaugural speech, he encouraged the students for working in green chemistry. Uh, Sanjeev Ozhare, sir, professor in ICER, he delivered the keynote address on theophen containing ladder type generation, next generation organic semiconductors. He informed us about the pi conjugated systems in organic electronic devices and about the general requirements for the use of organic semiconductors. Uh, Professor Vivek Polshettivar, associate professor, he delivered a talk on nanochemistry of sustainable development. He showed us the pathway for chemists to reduce pollution due to CO2 and use it productively. He enlightened about us about the nanocatalysis as a new way to meet the challenges of energy and sustainability. Um, lastly, but uh, Dr. Amit Zorge, he joined us from Enshed, Netherlands, and he spoke wonderful about green solvent, supercritical CO2 technology for sustainable chemistry. He showed us sustainable organic solvents which are also friendly for commercial production and use of supercritical liquids in cosmetics and the manufacturing. The students all over, they presented their papers beautifully and topic ranging from method development to analyze degradation product, pesticide in fish, green methods of synthesis, nanoscience, and so on. Uh, this entire session was conducted by Dr. Sushma Ambarikar, man, wonderfully. And thank you very much for being with us uh, for the entire uh, session you, of uh, National Conference. Yeah, correction was there, madam, slide. Hello, Barbade, madam. Uh, Hola, no. By mistake, uh, yeah. Goswami Grimal written as a chairman with the staff command. Just uh, can correct that. Oh. that oh. Really I'll do that. Huh. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So, so, all in all, it was a very absorbing session, full day, and congratulations to all team ACSSD. Yes, uh, apologies, you can continue. Thank you, sir. So we have been listening to eminent speakers deliberating since morning. I thank each and every speakers, every presenter for giving your time and knowledge with us and sharing your knowledge with us. All this valuable insight gave us a new perspective and knowledge. This will definitely going to help us in our future. So we will going to meet tomorrow at the same time at sharp 9 a.m. Everyone, see you soon. Yes. See you tomorrow. Yes. Thank you please, for joining. Uh, please uh, let us see a meet tomorrow. Thank you all, Madam, and all team. Once again, nice station, uh, Parajita uh, and Hiva. Congratulations to you both. 
and congratulations to all for today's successful day thank you thank you all thank you sir yeah okay we'll thank we'll close down yeah okay thank you all we will meet tomorrow at 9 o'clock sharply thank you so much